South Carolina State head coach Buddy Pugh brings his Bulldogs to Durham, riding a four-game winning streak and looking to put a bite into North Carolina Central. The opportunistic Eagles look to soar high and stay atop the MEAC standings. It's a battle in the MEAC right now on ESPNU. This is ESPNU College Football Primetime, presented by McDonald's. We welcome you to O'Kelly Riddick Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. It's a MEAC matchup between the South Carolina State Bulldogs and the North Carolina Central Eagles. So glad that you could join us from Durham on this Thursday night for MEAC football. I'm Mark Neely, along with former collegiate and pro quarterback Jay Walker. Jay, only one of these teams will leave here tonight unbeaten in conference play. And you have to continue to win. The mantra for both these squads, control your own destiny. Well, you can't control your own destiny if you lose this football game tonight and you have to count on somebody else to lose. This is going to be a very intense intense hard-hitting football game one of the top teams in the conference for many years has been south carolina state and they have built a tenacious defense tenacious is the perfect word to describe the way buddy q has the bulldogs playing defense led by andrew carter and javon hargrave from the nose tackle position they simply just terrorize opposing backfields throwing their linebacking core that can fly around the football field if you're gonna have any chance at beating south carolina state You've got to protect the football, and you cannot turn it over and allow them to get tackles for losses on continuous plays. Bulldogs defense faring very well in the MEAC. Thank you. Leading the conference in tackles for loss, sacks, interceptions, and passes defended. Now, last week, quarterback Jordan Reed for North Carolina Central had a very nice game against Howard. Jay, how does he extend that performance to tonight against the Bulldogs? It's got to be a similar type performance. Last week, he had a good ratio between running and passing. The good thing going for Jordan Reed, North Carolina Central, they have the most balanced offensive attack in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Their run-pass ratio is 50-50. They can beat you running the football. They can beat you throwing the football. When you're taking on North Carolina Central, it's pretty much like pick your own poison. Jordan Reed and the Eagles ready to go. They won the toss and have deferred. So NCCU will kick off. And South Carolina State will have the football first to begin this game. Jordan Reed again looking to build off that impressive performance and win over Howard last week. And Dwayne Foster is the interim head coach here at NCCU. And the dean of the MEAC coaches, Oliver Buddy Pugh, in his 11th year as the South Carolina State head coach. The home team Eagles. They are in their gray uniforms with the maroon trim. South Carolina State in the white with the Garnett trim. And from the end zone, Austin Smith will take a knee. And the Bulldogs will begin at their own 25. North Carolina Central 1-0 in conference play. South Carolina State 2-0. The win last week in Atlanta at the Georgia Dome. For NCA and T for the Bulldogs. And here's Richard Q, the redshirt senior quarterback. Well, Richard Q, the key for him is those numbers are okay. And for the Bulldogs to win, he does not have to be a great quarterback. He has to play good football, not great football, be a game manager. When you've got a defense that's as aggressive as the Bulldogs are, all they ask Richard Q to do is just to make some good decisions and protect the football. He was phenomenal last week in their victory over North Carolina A&T. Have to put the time back on the clock. They do since there was a touchback. Q61, 180 pounder. Shiraw, South Carolina, and Wilson High School. And they come out with four receivers. And it's handed off. Straight ahead up towards the 30 yard line. For a gain of five for Justin Taylor, the redshirt freshman back. And our impact players, Jay, when Bulldogs have the football. Tyler McDonald's special. He's an NFL type talent. Get him the football in open space, he can make great things happen. Taylor with a first down run across the 40 to the 42. Tackled by Ryan Smith, a gain of 12. First down, Bulldogs. And you know that South Carolina State wants to run the football, and if they catch you in an offensive look that they feel they can have success on, they'll get up to the line of scrimmage and run the same play consecutively. You see both teams go no huddle with different paces. Caleb Davis in motion to the right side. Set up the wide receiver screen. There's Tyler McDowell, who Jay was just talking about. Breaks a couple of tackles and scores forward across midfield. Into Eagles territory. They mark it down around the 47-yard line. 
and they said they put in a package this week specifically for McDonald to get the ball in space and allow him to make plays. He's their best offensive player. The ball is placed at the 47-yard line. First and 10, South Carolina State. Early in the football game. He's a gain of 11, another first down, handed off Justin Taylor. It's the pile right around the 45 for a gain of two. Justin Taylor, the running back. Taylor, who originally committed to Alabama and then was going to go to Kentucky, redshirted a year at Kentucky. He's the leading rusher for the Bulldogs coming in, averaging 56 yards per game. He has five rushing touchdowns in motion out of Atlanta North High School. It's Hemingway in motion. And here comes Davis in motion. Handoff once again. Taylor. A whole lot there that time, maybe a yard, yard and a half, and it's going to set up a third down. You see Taylor making a little fresher mistake. You don't want to get caught with your back to the defense. Ooh, ouch! Shoulder pad right to the back. Lesson learned for the freshman from Georgia. For a third down and five. And the Bulldogs on this, the first possession of the game. They come out with five receivers, three to the right side, and two from the empty backfield. Throws complete, but it looks shy of the first down. McDonald made the catch with forward progress about the 38, but Jay, he still looks like he'll be a little bit short. And that's one where, it's, if you're Richard Q, you take the completion, put your offensive coordinator and your head coach in a predicament. We need one yard. Can we go for it? Incomplete pass, you're punting. They'll take that. He went to the open receiver. Down he gave one. McDonald an opportunity to pick up the first down with the pass. Fell a yard short, but now the offense still has a chance to consider going for it on fourth Ruling down. Ruling the field is that it's a completed pass and that the runner was short of the first down. That play is under further review. That's the voice of Daryl Davis, our referee. I don't think there was any question, Jay, that it was a catch. I think they're mainly looking here for the spot of the football, and I think the spot was a pretty decent one from our vantage point. I thought it was accurate as well. I think maybe North Carolina Central head coach Foster, Dwayne Foster, saw one of his players run away with the football and was trying to figure out, did he catch it? How did he get the football so cleanly? But So you see, yep. uh, there you, go. Hey, you see an, an Eagle defender come away with the football. This may give us a better look here. That's it, Jordan it, Miles. He didn't catch it. That, that's a good review there. He's got it. Knee down to look well. Knee down. Oh. Jordan wasn't secure. Jordan Miles, their number 10, is the one who ran off with the football. It is the call. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Fourth down. So it is a catch, just short, spotted correctly. Fourth down. And one Bulldogs this year, six of 13 on fourth down, completing 46%. Handed off straight ahead. Brought in the big fullback with some power. Xavier Quick. The ball is advanced. He fights his way enough for a first down across the 35. Run into the backs, keeps the legs going, low center State. of gravity. Picked up the yard needed, plus two more. First down for the Bulldogs. Come out again with five receivers and three to the right side. Hemingway in motion to the right. To the left, that is. And here's the jet sweep. McDonald turns the left corner. Flag comes out. He stepped out around the 27. Oh, Andre Riley pushing him out. See the pink cap for our referee, Daryl Davis. Wow, from Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Well, the pink whistle. Holding. Offense, number 82. Ten-yard penalty. First out. Wide receiver Caleb Davis is called for the hold. And when you run the jet sweep, you see Davis right there. He's got a hold of the jersey, number 32. And once McDonald turns a corner, does not release. Got a good grasp there. Easy call for the official to make. Great look from our camera there on the sideline. So now the Bulldogs playing behind the chains at first and 20. The ball spotted back at the 42 of NCCU. Q throws across the middle, intercepted at the 18-yard line. Ryan Smith. Well, he's been one of their leading tacklers this year. The redshirt sophomore from Maryland with his first pick of the season. 
the ball gets away from him plus he's thrown in the coverage they have a good job of somebody underneath the route and somebody over the top of the route trying to squeeze the ball in a small window poor decision by Richard Q and that's an early turnover for North Carolina Central fourth pick thrown by Q this year and there's Ryan Smith who had three interceptions last year as a freshman his first of this season Here's Jordan Reed and the Eagles offense for the first time. And Reed going deep. The receiver collided with the defender at the 37, and a flag comes fly. There's also a flag in the backfield around the 11. And Stephen Murphy there, number 28 of the Bulldogs, that had the coverage. So two flags to sort out here. And you notice the officials are talking using the interactive devices that they have. There are have. two fouls on the play. Holding, 67 offense, pass interference, 28 defense. Those penalties will offset first half. Charles Goodwin called for the hold. And Murphy called for the pass interference. Yeah, down on the bottom of your screen, the double move, the hitch and go. And you see Murphy gets caught in no man's land, reaches back and tries to hold on to the wide receiver. All hit penalty. So with the offsetting penalties, it's first to ten once again. In the 19-yard line. Scruggs who shifts to the left side of the formation. Nathan Scruggs. And that is Idreas Augustus with his first carry of the night. Speaking of Augustus, let's take a look at our impact players. Well, Augustus is the running back. They like him to do a number of things. Catching the ball out the backfield, running between the tackles. Yeah, he's, he's a difference maker. Carry. Joe Thomas is probably one of the fastest interior linebackers in all of college football. With 4'4", four, 4'5", four, four, speed from the middle linebacker position, he really has a low pad level. He's a tremendous football player. Second down in nine. Augustus again trying to find some room. Augustus on the carry. About the 23, and it will be no gain on the play. He's Augustus, who's 5'7", 190 pounder, a redshirt sophomore out of Springfield, Virginia. He was tackled by be third and five. Thomas. Augustus last week, 14 carries, 82 yards rushing at Howard. It was a 37-28 win last week for the Eagles at Howard. Two special team touchdowns for the Eagles in that game really was the difference. Third and five. Reed. Did he catch it? No. Incomplete at the 38 yard line for Lamar Scruggs. And it's fourth down. Incomplete. No argument there from Scruggs. Pretty good pass from Reed that was catchable. And Lamar Scruggs did not hang on. Matthew Cornelius back to punt. Matthew Cornelius to punt for NCCU. Here's Cornelius. Stephen Murphy back to receive for South Carolina State. Stephen Murphy back at his own 35 to receive the punt for the Bulldogs. High short end over end punt taken at the 40 and a fair catch. For Stephen Murphy, so very good starting field position for South Carolina State and their second possession of the game when we return to Durham. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And in part by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. That's the NCCU Art Museum. Color and Freedom journey along the Underground Railroad from Joseph Holston. Currently on exhibit, best known for his Cubist abstract style, Joseph Holston. Color in Freedom at the NCCU Art Museum. Here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium in Durham. After a 36 yard punt by the Eagles, Matthew Cornelius with no return. South Carolina State with their second possession in this scoreless game. Miak on this Thursday night from Durham, North Carolina. Richard Q, the first possession was picked off. Yeah. Yeah. Time he's been intercepted this year. He hands it off. Justin Taylor wrapped up at the 42 yard line for a gain of two. Stopped by Alante Tuppins and Tasman Foster. With that interception by Q, you, you see the play selection change. They came out throwing the football, giving them open realm. But if he makes a poor decision in the passing game, they're going to decide to run the football. They feel comfortable running the football. 
Bulldogs offense right now leading the MEAC in scoring average of 31 points per game. And the turnover margin has been in their favor this year. But minus one so far tonight. This is Avery Quick. He keeps the feet moving all the way up near midfield. It looks like he has a first down yeah, before being stopped by Ryan Smith. And C.J. Moore, the safeties. South Carolina State has a plethora of running backs. You know, at one point this season, they were down to their fifth string running back. They've got Justin Taylor back. Dondre Brown, the freshman. Dondre Lewis Freeman was fifth string. He was a game breaker. Now they give you Xavier Quick, who seems to be a good one as well. Quick, just a freshman, 5'9", 220 pounder. Hughes pass. Larry makes a nice move on Hemingway. Near the 42 yard line. Hemingway. Nine for Tamaric Hemingway, who's 6'5 and a big target out there. Hemingway, former wide receiver, now they've got him in a three point stance, showing some ability. It's a nice move there after catching the football. Bulldogs right back to the line of scrimmage. Hands off Taylor. Works through to about the 36. Ryan Smith with a stop here. A gain of five for Taylor. Spotted at the 36. And there's a first down for South Carolina State. This is about the spot of the field on their first drive where things stalled a bit. They made it on a fourth and short. And then Q threw the interception. Hugh fakes, sets up the pass to the right side, and down the sideline, headed towards the end zone, Rowe. Dennis Rowe, 36-yard touchdown. You focus so much on the running game, and then they get you with the quick screens, which are just extended handoffs. Dennis Rowe. Does a good job of making the catch, making the move to the outside. You're thinking run, 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 he gets the pass off. A good block by the tight end Hemingway. He was off to the races. Point after is up and through from Nicholas Belcher. Second touchdown catch of the season for junior Dennis Rowe. A five play drive, eight up 60 yards. So the Bulldogs on their second possession of the football game find the end zone. 8.07 to play in the first quarter for Durham, 7-0. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Battle of the VAC tonight, South Carolina State, North Carolina Central, 7-0 Bulldogs, thanks to Dennis Rose, second touchdown catch of the year. I'll tell you what, Jay, he had a couple of blockers on that far sideline to escort him down into the end zone. This is a great play schematically. This is Dennis Rowe right here, but what you're going to see is they're going. he's not a threat when he's the only receiver, but they managed to sneak two linemen down the field to serve as blockers along with the tight end to block the person that's guarding uh, Dennis Rowe. This is great execution by the formation. Nothing about the formation said wide receiver bubble screen's coming. They snuck linemen and a tight end out there. Great play by Joe Blackwell on the call. Was right tackle Charles Henderson, number 54, who got downfield to help out with a couple of blocks. Get Rowe into the end zone. I actually like that concept. If you're going to have these wide receiver screens so often, we see teams run it with wide receivers blocking downfield. They don't really know how to block. Send a lineman downfield that knows how to block, that blocks for a living. And if you can get them down there, some mobile, athletic, offensive linemen, you can have big plays like South Carolina State just pulled off. Yeah, well, well, kick. Kick. Hey, trying to keep it out of the hands of Wilkinson if they can, but he takes it at the five. Wilkinson so capable of breaking one up to the 32-yard line. He already has a punt return for TD and a kickoff return for touchdown this season. Well, what's on tap tonight here in Durham? The NFL Hall of Fame trio. Yeah, that's Harry Carson. We'll tell you more about that. Also, NC Central, did you know that one of their alums is the tallest player ever to play in the NFL? And history made in high school. Do you remember the Titans? We'll tell you about the inspiration for the movie. And oh yeah, Walker's weekend watch. What you need to pay attention to this weekend in college football, according to Jay. First play, they lose the football. And it's jumped on by South Carolina State. 
I believe that was number 56, Alexander Glover, the left end, who recovered it. Robinson may have knocked it loose, the defensive tackle. Trying to force the running game, there's just nothing there. He gets stopped behind the line of scrimmage, and a great job by Javon Hargrave, the defensive tackle, going down for the tackle, realized he had his hand on the football, was able to strip it away before the running back hit the ground. Great play by Hargrave in the middle of the defense. So Hargrave strips Augustus. And now the turnover margin. South Carolina State again a plus seven. Is that the runner fumbled the ball prior to going down? That play is under further review. So they'll take a look at it, and we just looked at it, and it seemed to be the correct call. But I tell everybody, I'm batting about <laughs> two, 200. You know, my batting average is about 200 on the replays. But he seems to have him. He realized that as he's going down. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's a strip. Yeah. You know, and you saw Hargrave. We, we talked about him a little bit in the open. He's a difference maker. He's finally playing at a healthy uh, weight. He's got everything going. He's just a sophomore. Talked to their defensive line coach, David Blanchard. He said, when he's healthy along with Andrew Carter, there's no offensive line in this conference that can block him. You saw right there the difference he was able to make. And if you don't believe me, ask North Carolina a and last week how disruptive he was as well. We should have this call confirmed. And when that, if it indeed happens, it'll be Bulldogs football at the 21-yard line of NCCU. Once again, our referee, Daryl Davis. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down for South Carolina State. I well, didn't say it was confirmed, but he did say it was stand. It stands, so there was no evidence to overturn the call on the field. So Augustus fumble. Gives it to the Bulldogs. At the 21-yard line with South Carolina State already owning a 7-0 lead on a 36-yard touchdown catch. In the previous possession for Dennis Rowe. Empty backfield again with five receivers, three to the right side. And to Mary Kimingway in motion. Q pressured off the edge, rolls out. He's got room to run, but will throw towards the end zone dangerously, and it's broken up incomplete. Now, number two, Ryan Smith. He's the closest one to coming up with this ball in the end zone. This is a play you don't have to make. You're running to your right. You're throwing the ball almost across your body. Defensive back has a chance to undercut that throw. That, that's a throw you just throw it away or just run. Just run the football. He had daylight in front of him. Pick up five or six yards instead. Incomplete pass, second and long. Davis in motion. Handed off to Dondre Lewis Freeman. He's pushed back. Just a yard there for the redshirt sophomore out of Charlotte. Tackled by Jordan Miles and Phillip Mitchell. Running against a 3-4 defense can be difficult. This is a defensive line that's always shifting one direction to the other. So when you've only got three D linemen, if they slant one way, you can't run it to where they are. First meeting between these schools back in 1927 last year. The Eagles with a 30-point win, but... Bulldogs lead the overall series 11 wins to nine. Q bumps it across the middle and a completed pass at the 15. Leading forward out to the 11 yard line. Tony Williams bringing down the receiver, Lewis Freeman, out of the backfield. He went for eight yards. Only 110 yards for South Carolina State. NC Central after that fumble there, minus six in passing yards yet. But South Carolina down. State has pretty much had the football almost the entire first quarter here with 6.30 to go on fourth and one. They will attempt the field goal. Off the left hash, Nicholas Belcher, 29-yard attempt. High, and he knocks it through. So Belcher... With the field goal at 29 yards, it was 6.18 left first quarter. It's now a 10-0 South Carolina State lead.
10 nothing Bulldogs, 6.18 to play in this first quarter. Well, have you ever wondered, has there been a seven-footer play in the NFL? Well, the answer is yes. He actually played his college ball right here at Durham at NCCU. Richard Sly played here in 1962-64, to 64, then went in the NFL with the Oakland Raiders. He was right at seven feet tall. Look at that picture. I mean, look that at is the quarterback. Awesome. The quarterback <laughs> looks like a, a midget. He can't go anywhere with the football. You talk about having a throwing lane, but you've got a saw seven-foot defensive lineman. Seems like he should be able to bat down balls at will. Back to receive for the Eagles. Now well, from the five, this is Wilkins, who's so dangerous. He stretched it out to the near side, ran into his own man that helped the Bulldogs bring him down at the 23-yard line. Wilkins, who's a wide receiver, but so great on special teams. Ran into Tyron Harris, no guy. That Rid of that run back for being a little further. Well, now the Eagles offense, J.A., has to show something here. They need to put some points on the board because if South Carolina State scores another touchdown, then you make North Carolina Central one-dimensional. The key strength for North Carolina Central is their balance. Running the ball effectively and throwing the ball effectively. They fall behind by too much. They become one-dimensional. That's not their strength. Augustus. Talked it up on his previous carry on the last drive. But he didn't get much there. In fact, just back to the line of scrimmage. Dwayne Foster, who's the interim head coach, and on the staff for Henry Frazier, replacing Coach Frazier in August. As the interim head coach was on his staff in other spots as well. Was at Prairie View AM. Louis oh, State, he was an offensive line coach. Dwayne Foster said, Hey, I would love the job permanently. Clearly, this is an audition for him at North Carolina Central's good football club. We have 27. There he is drumming there to make sure he's down. Third down. Line to gains the 30, just past the 32 for a first down. A long four. Wilkins set up in the slot here on the near side. Reed rolling out, throws on the move, looking for Wilkins, but nicely defended by Kamari on the who reached around and broke it up, and it's fourth down. And this is an aggressive Bulldog defense. You see. Up. The quarterback Reed thinks he has time. He doesn't. Just a great job by Kamario McFadden. Making sure he's going to knock down the ball and not allow the receiver to get away if he missed. South Carolina State defensively is putting on a clinic thus far. Well, thus far for the offense, for the Eagles, punt, turnover, and now another punt. Under pressure, knocked down Cornelius. Now a late flag comes out. Ball's bouncing around midfield. Referee Daryl Davis gave it a long look, and Cornelius slowed Fly getting up, field. but draws the flag, and if it's what we think it is, that's going to be enough for a first down. Curious, now did, or was I'm the curious. punt deflected? Yeah, did they tip it? I thought they might have tipped kicker. it. Defense, number 32, five yards. Oh, they First didn't even down. run into him. He acted. Did you see the acting job? Who, who gets him? <laughs> they run around him. And I also think they tip the football. Which if they tip the football, then the... You can't call yeah. it. They got some of that football. Well, this looks like a big break here for NCCU. And it looked like perhaps Tevin Richard of the Bulldogs had a hand on the punt. And then, as you mentioned, Jay, it didn't look like there was any contact. No, if, if he swings that leg from one side to the other, you know, that's got kind of a fair game there. They did a good job of trying to avoid him. That's just a tough break for South Carolina State. Now a timeout called by the timeout. Eagles. The play clock. It's a 30-second timeout. Winding down. Well... Let's watch and listen again, see if we hear 
foot hit the football and then perhaps a defensive hand hit the football. Did you hear a double click there? He got and then he saw that flag and then he went down a little bit more. There may be a smile on his face right now that we can't see. It adds a little hobble. Well, able to run off. <laughs> Matthew Cornelius, who, who has an interesting family history. He's from Charlotte, North Carolina. His great great grandfather helped the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk launch the first airplane, and his great great grandmother helped sew the cloth wings on the first airplane for the Wright brothers. Wow, I guess we are in North Carolina, huh? That's right. That's interesting. Think he likes to fly? He may like to act. <laughs> well, I'm well we he helped he out his team. <laughs> we know he likes to act. It worked. You see the first downs, only one so far, and that comes on penalty for the Eagles. On the back of field, spun down at the 36-yard line. Kevin Thompson by Sheldon Robinson of the Bulldogs. So often, a short week, you hear coaches talk yeah, about, we played on Saturday, yeah. then we have to get ready to play on Thursday. I think that really helped out South Carolina State. They played a very intense football game in the Atlanta Classic versus a and and the intensity is coming through right away. They're very intense on the football field, flying around, hitting their keys, and dominating this North Carolina Central offense right there. Being chased, just lets it go, way out of bounds. Jordan Reed and a defender right in his face settles, but a flag is laying in the secondary about the 43. Flag on the field. We were talking earlier. You see the headset there that the referee has on. He's able to talk to the officials without and face. And eligible receiver downfield, number 54. That penalty is declined. Third down. In the MEAC conference, the first in all of FCS football to utilize the new technology. Now well, the center, Keaton Burgess, is the recipient of the penalty as he got too far downfield as Reed was trying to elude settles and just threw it out of bounds. But every every time you see the North Carolina Central call a play, their white jerseys everywhere. I mean, they're aggressive, but they play sound fundamental defense with that aggressive nature. That's the mark of a really well-coached football team that pays attention to their cues and their assignments and not afraid to hit you. Third down and eight for NCCU again. Blitz off the edge, lets it fly deep down the sideline and just out of reach. Incomplete, Shahid Swenson. Sheldon Robinson pushed down Reed, pressuring the quarterback. Yeah, they're bringing the blitz. One more than you can block. And you see Robinson able to get there, but Reed got rid of the football but because of that split second sooner, wasn't able to make the accurate throw, long and complete pass, and once again, here comes the punt unit for North Carolina Central. He brings out Matthew Cornelius once again. Cornelius Drummond back deep on oh, this side. Like Doesn't even make it out of Eagles territory. That may be the first three-yard punt I've ever seen. May not go for much more than that. Well, it's a double header at college football at ESPNU Saturday. First at 3.30, it's the All-State Game of the Week as Virginia takes on Maryland. And then at 7, Georgia Tech takes on BYU, presented by 5-Hour Energy. Both games are live on Watch ESPN. Virginia won the last three games at Maryland. A turnover margin minus 8. Maryland, though, overall has won two of the last three meetings. I wonder if the football karma gods had anything to do with that 12-yard uh, punt Up to the 40-yard line of the Eagles. And right back in the hands of Dondre Lewis Freeman, gain of seven. Ball in the hands of the 40-yard line. With a second and three. Out of Hopewell High School in Charlotte last week in Atlanta, 19 carries, 70 yards, and a touchdown. Advances it just outside the 35 here for a first down. Pick up a four. Ty Brown and Jordan Miles with the tackle. This is when a good football team really makes your life miserable. They have an opportunity to put this team down by 17 points early. Now, North Carolina Central has not played good football at all. 
If you're a South Carolina State, you want to punish and make them pay, score a touchdown, put them down by 17 points. Lewis Freeman. Put down at the 31 by Jordan Miles once Lewis again. Freeman on five the carry. yards. And look at the way that they're doing it. They're, they're taking their time. They're running their offense, and the offensive line is simply Ball dominating the, the line of scrimmage. Starting with their center, Second number 55, five. Tristan Bellamy, an all-conference performer. When you've got a great center that's a good run blocker, and you can just pound the football away on somebody, that's how you dominate games. Bellamy, a three-year starter now at center. Late again for Lewis Freeman, but not a whole not lot of time. Freeman on the carry. Felix Small, the defensive end, a junior out of Brooklyn, New York. Pick up a one. With the stop. Down and four. Picking up a third and four. And nothing. South Carolina State leading. Throw a touchdown catch. Belts for a 29 yard field goal. And the Bulldogs marching again. In motion was Tyler McDonald. Watch McDonald. They're going to find a way to get him the football. Q. Yep, you got it, Jay. Gives it to him on that wide receiver screen. He has the first down. Take it down at the 20 yard line. Sniff that one out, partner. He gained a nine. First down. You want the matchup, and he's your big playmaker. When he goes in motion and they don't bring an extra defender, you've got to think they're getting him the football. Advantage there. They called another wide receiver screen. Down on such a good ball carry in open space, able to pick up the first down. Hughes going to keep it. Takes off. Makes a move at the 10. Cuts back in near the goal line. Did not get in. But a nice run for the quarterback, Richard Q, all the way down around the one where it'll be first and goal. Great game management, great decision. Pull the ball out of the stomach of the running back, Lewis Freeman. Make a couple of defenders miss. Get close to the goal line, secure the football. That's Richard Q playing at a high level in the running game. 19-yard gain. And a run by the quarterback, Q. Puts it in the belly. And taking it into the end zone, Xavier Quick, the freshman, touchdown, Bulldogs. And a dominant early statement here from Buddy Pugh's Bulldogs, up 16-0. Just running the football and coming into the football game, you knew they were going to establish the run at the line of scrimmage. The quarterback throws an interception in the first series. They don't get deterred. They come out and say, let's go to game plan. Well, turn back the for the kick. Right now, the Bulldogs are up by 17 on the road. And Belcher knocks the point after through. There's Quick, the freshman. Seven play drive, and they ran it six times on that drive. Controlling the line of scrimmage. Great decision by the quarterback. Pulling the football, making a defender miss, getting close to the end zone, and then you get it this close. Bring in the muscle. Xavier Quick, the big fullback, running back for South Carolina State. Pretty easy score. And they score after the shanked punt by Cornelius. Gave him great field position around midfield. In fact, needed only 47 yards to get it into the end zone. We look at the possessions that the Aggies, I should say the Eagles, have had compared to the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. Yeah, they were picked. Q on the first possession, but since then, he's redeemed himself. Yes, yeah, the, the interception, they moved the ball a little bit. And, then through the interception, but this is an offense right now that's controlled the line of scrimmage. They're getting the ball to their playmakers in space, and I think ultimately the credit goes to that offensive line with Charles Henderson, Devin Flowers, Bellamy Grant, and Wilson really having their way versus the three-man defensive look for North Carolina Central. NCCU's had it three times, punt, turnover, punt on their three possessions. Special teams helped to beat Howard last week. A couple of special teams touchdowns. Maybe we play on special teams can get them right back in this game. They have it in the hands of the guy they want, Adrian Wilkins, but along the sideline pinned in. Wilkins out near the 25 yard line. South Carolina State and their defense. We mentioned the word tenacious earlier tonight. They can bring it. Look at all the white jerseys surrounding the quarterback, and then the defensive back comes in and makes a play. More pressure on the quarterback, this time up the middle, forcing him to throw the ball away. Then they bring a blitz from the outside linebacker, Sheldon Robinson, affecting the throw. They are, they're aggressive, they're fundamentally sound, and they've got a motor. That's the making of a great defensive unit. Again, at their own 24, a little problem with the snap, and 
It's Malcolm Bell who's now in at quarterback. And they Malcolm lose Bell. yardage on that. On the carry. You know, normally when you bring in the backup quarterback, you're going to run some type of running package, wildcat package. Malcolm Bell, redshirt freshman, runs a little bit, runs a little bit better. And there, so. Now Reed comes right back in, so Malcolm Bell was in for one play. Reed back in, and inherits a second down and 12 after a loss of two. Under a minute to go in this first quarter from Durham. Reed being pursued by Carter. Look out. Wow. Robinson, Carter after him, and a loss of five. Look out is right. I mean, pressure initially by Andrew Carter flushes him out of the pocket, and this defense is good. There are white jerseys everywhere. Once one defender makes you leave the pocket, there are another three jerseys around you. It's just human nature as a quarterback to start reading the pass rush when things like that continue to occur. Second sack of the season for Robinson and tackles for loss per game in the FCS. South Carolina State in the top five in that category. That's the end of the first period. Indeed it is. So NCCU a rough first quarter here on their home field and on the first play of the second quarter they're going to have a third and long to contend with. But Richard Hugh works around an early interception. Found row for a 36-yard touchdown. Also quick and it's 17 nothing. The Geico High School Football Showcase, tomorrow at 8 on ESPNU. Welcome back to ESPNU College Football Primetime, presented by McDonald's. On the VAC tonight, Durham, North Carolina, South Carolina State, leading NC Central 17-0 as we begin the second quarter. Glad to have you with us. Mark Neely along with Jay Walker and our ESPNU crew. You may be able to tell some rain is starting to fall here. And first quarter numbers heavily favor the Bulldogs. Wow, what do you mean? Minus 12, give up running seven yards. They've been completely dominated. And this is one of the most impressive defensive performance I've seen from a football team in a long time. Buddy Pugh and the boys from Orangeburg knew that this defense was getting good. Traditionally, South Carolina State keeps a good defense. I don't know if he thought the team would be this good this quickly. They're dominating. Jordan Reed in the first quarter, one for five, just seven yards passing. On the pool in motion. Reed on third down at 17. Pulled down around the 17 yard line. No gain. Justin Hughes, weak side linebacker with the stop. This is how you play defense. Fundamentally sound. Three man rush. Watch this guy right here. What's his job? Watch the quarterback. They've only got three linemen rushing. He's just looking. Okay, when you try to leave, I've got you. That's how you play the game. You get pressure, you make him leave. The quarterback thinks he can run. Linebacker waiting for him, nowhere to go. The Bulldogs are going to get the football back. Anthony Cornelius to punt, standing at his own four-yard line, and with the pressure, is able to get it away. A fair catch is taken at the Eagles' 47-yard line by South Carolina State's Darius Drummond. ESPNU's coverage of high school football continues tomorrow when four-star recruit and UCLA commit Austin Roberts leads Carmel against in-state rival Pike. Find out who gets bragging rights at the Geico ESPN High School Football Showcase. Battle of Indiana Pike and Carmel tomorrow at 8 on ESPNU. Also live on Watch ESPN. Dominic Booth also from Pike, committed to Tennessee. And now 182 on the ESPN 300. Buddy Pugh's Bulldogs, 18 of their 23 plays they've run tonight have been in NCCU territory in the begin 47 of the Eagles. The pass with the run from Tyler McDonald in the 41-yard line. Tyler McDonald's special talent. You know, scouts were there to see him this past weekend. In two weeks, they, they liked what he did. He got the nature's attention when he had a 100-yard receiving game versus Clemson. And he's averaging over 30 yards per catch. It's just a matter of time before he breaks a long one in this football game. McDonald had a couple of TDs in that week two loss at Clemson. 
One of those was a 63-yard touchdown catch. As Taylor gets the run there for the Bulldogs. First down, South Carolina State. Taylor. Well, coming the other way. Strip, no, this is not a live ball. That's Alante Tuppins heading towards the end zone, but the play's been whistled dead. Ooh. <laughs> as, as quickly as that whistle was blown, and as quickly as he got the football. Wayne Foster. The ruling on the field is that forward progress has stopped prior to the ball coming out. Second down. Well, let's look and listen. I know there's some Iowa State fans probably watching that have an interest in this type of play as well. The game in Austin, in Texas. Oh, he got it clearly. That whistle came after the defender was 20 yards downfield. Yeah, now you're South Carolina State. You snap this ball as quickly as possible. Oh, they didn't get it off. This has to come back. This is defense's football. You know, these are one of the rules and changes that they made where you can make the challenge. And because they came up with the football, you won't get the touchdown, but you will be rewarded with the football. Wayne Foster there talking with referee Daryl Davis. Here's the play again. Well, there wasn't a whistle at all. The whistle came when he was 20 yards the other direction. And I think the part that's got to be more disappointing is when you heard the whistle, he was already running the other direction. North Carolina Central coach wanted to challenge the ruling of forward progress. That ruling is not challengeable. He therefore challenged with a timeout. That's his second charge timeout. Wow. You talk about rubbing salt in the wounds right there. Yeah. You can't challenge the forward progress. You can challenge the whistle inadvertently, but the forward progress you cannot challenge. Uh, here's a big break for South Carolina State. They snap it. Running left, Caleb Davis unable to really turn the corner for much. But the Bulldogs are fortunate to keep possession. That really could have been the play, Jay, that helped get the Eagles back in the football game. This is the momentum changing play here. You know, the tough thing about it, the momentum wasn't stopped. I mean, you, you blow the whistle when you see the momentum stop. He catches it right away, gets it cleanly, and was off to the races. That's a tough, unfortunate call for North Carolina Central. Few across the middle to McDonald. Makes a couple of moves. And is right near the marker. Looks like he's going to have the first down to where they spot him about the 26. Tackled by Tony Williams. They had a chance a couple of times to get him before he, he reached the line to gain for the first down. And the fans here are still antsy in Durham. I mean, they're still <laughs> on the edge of their seat wondering how the touchdown was taken off the board. Lewis Freeman to the 21. Well, no doubt a big play. The Eagles fans not happy after basically uh, having a touchdown taken away. Second and five. Once again, Lewis Freeman. Spins around up inside the 15 to the 14. Seven yard gain. Keem Swan and CJ Moore wrapped them up. Bulldogs right back to the line to snap it again quickly. And the whistle blows right after the snap. Timeout. North Carolina Central. That's their third and final charge timeout of the half. It's a 30-second timeout. So the Eagles have now used all of their timeouts after losing one. Trying to appeal on that last call. 17-0 Bulldogs. Twelve oh two left till halftime from Durham, North Carolina. ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by McDonald's. 17-0 South Carolina State on top. Richard Q threw an early interception for South Carolina State, but since then, Putting up good numbers, including a touchdown pass to Rowe. 
compare that to the numbers of Jordan Reed, who's off to a sluggish start, just one completion and five attempts for seven yards. Jordan Reed will get it going at some point. He just wanted to win. He throws too nice a football to continue to struggle as much as he has tonight. First down, South Carolina State. Q, play fake. Pass completed to the tight end, Tameric Hemingway. Jasmine Foster pushing him out inside the tent. Temple Cincinnati coming up on ESPN tomorrow, 8.30 Eastern time. Next game up on the ESPN networks. You hands it off, big hit though. Tasman Foster came up to put a lick on Dondre Lewis Freeman. And that's the name we have a call that we need to call more for North Carolina Central. They said he has to have double-digit tackles for them to slow down the running game for South Carolina State. Quite simply, their best football player, 5'10", 215 pounds. They need him to make more plays like that around the line of scrimmage. Foster came in averaging nearly 12 tackles per game, tops in the MIAC. Team leader with 58 tackles on the season coming in. Q going towards the end zone. Oh, what a, what catch, a catch! But McDonald was out of bounds. Tremendous one handed catch with that left hand from McDonald that he came down out of bounds. Look at this play. That's a touchdown. Ah, oh, woo, he got the foot down. This is college. You just need one. Take a look at the first foot. That's Inbounds, yeah. maybe had to re-grab it. But did he have possession and of the double football? Double clutch. I don't know if he had. Uh, then it goes away. Possession, okay. yet. Yeah. Good the heck of an effort. Nicholas Belcher, 26-yard attempt out of the hold of Richard Q. And that one is up and good. So he hit one from 29, and now he's hit one from 26. But when we come back to Durham, North Carolina, what's on the agenda of Walker's weekend watch? Find out when we come back. Very impressive with his eight touchdowns. Because they score so much, I think he gets overshadowed. He's averaging 11 yards a carry. Wilkins mishandled it, but has the speed and the wherewithal. To make a sidestep move across the 30, flag back at the 13-yard line, though. Lucas had some trouble, trouble picking it up off the turf, and now we have some late pushing and shoving going on. And there's a Eagles player down. Kevin Staten, 26, was slow to get up. He does get to his feet. Doing the return, illegal block in the back. Number 83 of the return team. Add the distance to the goal, first down. Like in the back on Nathan Scruggs. He's the tight end. And brother of wide receiver Lamar Scruggs. So that'll take a bite out of the return of Wilkins. There's the push. Where is it? Yep. You see the moves from Wilkins. He's got some, man. Wilkins had 166 all-purpose yards last week against Howard. 98 on punt returns, 68 on kickoff returns. But Eagles starting at their own seven-yard line. Trying to get something going on the ground. Augustus. It seems to be too much for him. I mean, this front four for South Carolina State is dominate. There's nowhere to run. The strength of North Carolina Central, as we talked about, is their balance, but there's no running room. There's no running lane, so they're wasting the play every time they run, and they're falling behind quickly. Minus four total yards. Good pass to Augustus, but doesn't even make it outside the 10, and it's third down. And this is a decent offensive unit when you talk about North Carolina Central. I mean, I mean they can score 24 points a game. They've taken on some good competition. But right now, they seem to be overmatched. Well, last week, Jay, North Carolina Central had a season high 215 yards rushing at Howard. But no question they're facing a, a different type of defense here tonight with South Carolina State. An impressive front four. And this is when it gets dangerous. You're backed up third and nine and you're backed up 
in your own end zone almost. And they've got four defensive linemen that you know are going to come. Coming after Reed in his own end zone, escapes, fires a bullet, but incomplete at the 38 yard line. Intended for Nathan Scruggs, and it's fourth down. And as we take a look at this, I want you to see how many white jerseys get to the quarterback. You see the quarterback running off the field that way. Just take a look at the pressure. They're going to bring some blitz up the middle. One person misses, and he thinks he's going to get away. You've got two other white jerseys ready to hit him. They are playing football at a high level right now. The boys from Orangeburg. Cornelius to punt out of his own end zone. He gets it away, but a short punt. Going to take a bounce and is down at the 29 yard line. The starting field position for South Carolina State There's no tonight. Foul for running into the kicker. <laughs> the kicker was hit by his own player. Here's the explanation Cornelius not able to buy another running into the kicker penalty. His own man ran into him. But starting field position, very good starting field position again for the Bulldogs. Well, the latest chapter of the Red River rivalry game will be written Saturday on ABC. Taylor, 27. And with a defense that's dominating like South Carolina State, I mean, they've played this whole football game in, in North Carolina Central Territory. The You're not exaggerating by much. <laughs> I mean, the battlefield position has gone out of question for South Carolina State. Q off the play fake finds the open man inside the 10. Nice play, Ryan Smith eventually bringing down Marvin Poole. Look at the play fake. Complete sell. They don't locate the football. Tight end comes across the formation for the easy throw. Amber Gibbons there, the tight end with that catch. And now back on the ground, Justin Taylor. Taylor. Down by Jordan Miles, the inside linebacker. No gain on the play. Jordan Miles lost his helmet, so he has to come out for a play. And that's about the only thing that can slow down South Carolina State. I mean, they're getting to the line of scrimmage in a hurry, calling plays, because they realize they have a tired defense for North Carolina Central on the field. Second down and goal for the Bulldogs. Taylor. Towards the pylon, he's in, touchdown. Nine-yard touchdown run, Justin Taylor, the redshirt freshman, sixth of the season. And the Bulldogs are rolling tonight. And even when they get penetration, they finally get penetration, not able to make the tackle. Taylor goes pretty much untouched into the end zone. South Carolina State is putting on a clinic on both sides of the football now. Point after for Nicholas Belcher. And with 8.39. Time out. Media. Left till halftime. It has been all Bulldogs. 27 nothing. Justin Taylor with the touchdown run. Cap it off that drive. The Bulldogs are roaring tonight. Virginia, Maryland at 3.30. Then Georgia Tech, BYU. Saturday. ESPNU College Football Primetime. Brought to you by the Venture Card from Capital One. Earn double miles you can actually use. And the all new 2014 Lexus IS. It's your move. That's the North Carolina Central Eagles weight room. And they rub the head of the Eagle for good luck when they come in and out of the weight room. And you see the sledgehammer there. That's given to the defensive player of the week. And that player of the week gets to carry the sledgehammer onto the field prior to the game. And tonight it was Cleavon Davis, number 56, who brought the sledgehammer out onto the field for the Eagles. Maybe they need to bring the whole Eagle out here. They need something to rub the rub the head of the Eagle to change the tie. They need some luck right now or something to stop what's taking place on this football field here in Durham. Wilkins and Dixon back for the Eagle. Favor of the Bulldogs, and they've scored all 27 of the game's points. Number one, Wilkins. the 32-yard line, and he returns at about 30 yards. A pretty good field position to start this drive for the Eagles. 
but the fact that South Carolina State has run 31 of their 37 plays tonight, Jay, in Eagles territory, including their last 27 in a row, and NC Central has yet to make it into Bulldogs territory. And I think offensive coordinator Michael Bryant's one of the young, bright minds in college football for North Carolina Central. Whatever you scripted and worked on coming in this game, get rid of it. You've got to make Jordan Reed hit some big plays throwing the football to get back in this contest. Reed looking to throw on first down, chase back to the near side and fires too high at the 40 of the Bulldogs. Looking. Right, there is a flag out. It's going to be a late hit on the quarterback. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 41, 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Tyrod Harris was the intended receiver, but Carter, Andrew Carter, called for the penalty. I'm going to come off the field. Carter came in with eight and a half sacks to lead the MEAC. That's when there you see Coach Pugh telling them, we're up by 27 points. Team has not come close across the midfield. You give them their biggest play of the day with that penalty there. No room for that. Eagles almost out of their own territory at their own 47. And the right, Kevin Thompson cuts it back. He stopped just shy of midfield at the 49 of the Eagles for a pickup of two. Yeah, Mike the Wilson was there to halt his progress. Still negative yardage, total yards for NC Central. You've got to do something. I mean, giving up. First of all, let's give credit to the offense. South Carolina State put up 200 yards total offense in a quarter and a half, but North Carolina Central still in negative total yardage. It's not how you're going to win football games. Reed flushed out again. He's going to take off, and the Eagles are into Bulldogs territory for the first time tonight. Up to the 47 yard line, a gain of four. Long plays at the 47. They're going to be shy of the first down by about four yards. It'll be third and four. And they really need to convert this third down right now. One, to keep their defense off the field, and two, to keep their drive alive. The defense has to be winded offensively. If I'm Michael Bryant, I'm thinking I'm going for it on two plays if we don't get it on third down. Wilkins in the slot here on the near side. Here's Reed going across the middle, deflected, batted down by Reggie Owens. Reed pass. Fourth down. Yeah, you know, and the numbers say that that you punt it away, but you're down. Look at a good job by Reggie Owens, number 42, <laughs> staying in the eyesight of the quarterback and jumping when the ball was thrown. He had that eyeball the whole way. Owens out of Statesboro High School in Statesboro, Georgia. 11 games as a true freshman last year. Here he's drumming back at his own 10. Received the Cornelius punt. Makes the fair catch. Fair catch is called. The 19. The 19 Some of the Hall of Famers for the Bulldogs. Deacon Jones. Went into Canton in the class of 1980. Marion Motley, class of 68. And oh yeah, Harry Carson. Former Giants great in the class of 2006. Now here's one for you, but there's a Hall of Famer that's missing. That should be in the NFL Hall of Fame. So you're saying he's not in the not Hall of Fame? Hall of fame. I can't believe he should be. He should be in there. Went to South Carolina State and played for the Steel Curtain. Two, two, seven, two, three, four, five. Let you think about it for a little while. Brandon King goes in motion. Quick pass by Q out into the flat. McDonald across the 25 to the 26 for a gain of six. You ready? Hit me with it. Donnie Shell. Nice call. Donnie Shell. That's something where the rest of the defense is in. He hasn't gotten in yet. Definitely had a Hall of Fame type career. Second down and four. Few hands it off to Lewis Freeman. Andre Lewis Freeman. Move to 27. Andre Lewis Freeman, the ball carrier. Maybe didn't even advance quite that far. Minimal gain. And it's third down and a long three.
Faking the handoff. Q. And throws it out of bounds. Out of bounds. Well, the NC Central defense needed this. It's going to be the first punt of the night That'll for bring South up Carolina down. State. The Eagle defense holds. And for the first time, South Carolina State's on the bad end of the battle of field position, but they would still be winning had it not been for the late hit on the quarterback by Andrew Carter, which really helped North Carolina Central gain a little bit of momentum in trying to win the battle field position, and now they should get their best field position of the night after this punt. And you saw Wilkins standing back at the 37 of the Eagles. Last week at Howard, Wilkins had an 89-yard punt return, the second longest punt return in school history. Out of 166 all-purpose yards. Eagles have to look like they're coming after this one. Walter gets it away. The line drive taken at the 33. Wilkins, midfield. Pulled down at the 39, lost the football, but it rolled out of bounds. Spotted at the 40. So the Eagles fortunate to keep possession, but a 28-yard return for Wilkins. This is a line drive punt, which you call a boomerang punt. When you kick a low line drive, it's going to come right back at you with the return man. Caught it on the fly, able to make the first bulldog tackler miss. Towards the end of that play, fortunate that ball went out of bounds. And this time the Eagles begin a drive at the 40-yard line of South Carolina State. Reed hands off. Tucker. Hit by Joe Thomas. 37. Look at the drive chart for the Eagles. A punt, fumble, and four straight punts. It's been a tough one. It's been a tough one. And they still haven't figured out the riddle, which is this South Carolina State defense. I know the game plan was to use play action passing, but with no threat of a running game, the City Ducks. I think Thompson. Look at the relentless pursuit. I mean, they are disrupting the play the moment the quarterback says hike. Mike Wilson left in. That's a loss of a yard. <laughs> Just look at white jerseys occupying space. Everywhere. Talk about crowd and line of scrimmage. Now, this is when they're special here. Take take a look here. That, that's Carter. That's Andrew Carter. They bring their best pass rusher and put him on the inside technique to try and bring pressure up the middle as opposed to pressure on the edge. Carter coming after him. Throw is caught right near the marker. Forward progress. Reed's to the bad. 29 for Lamar Scruggs. Completes First the Lamar down after a gain of nine. The ball is placed at the 29. They had the look they wanted. Carter did a good hard inside rush, got pressure, flushed Reed out of the pocket. But fortunately for Reed, Scruggs was able to come open downfield, pick up the first down. Third first down for the Eagles tonight, but their first first down that has come not via penalty. In the handoff, Reed keeping Jordan Reed on down at the, the quarterback game. You almost get the sense that Andrew Carter defensive on. coordinator Mike Adams has a copy of the North Carolina Central playbook, <laughs> and he's stealing signals because every play that they call, they've got one guy there to take away the run, and then three more guys to take away the quarterback. I know they're fast. I know they're good. Wow. So he, he knows the play before it's being called. Talk about studying your opponent's tendencies. Reed across the middle of the oven. That looked like it skipped incomplete at the 11 Reed yard bad. line for Marvin Poole. Intended for Marvin Poole. Number 44, Incomplete. Sheldon Robinson on the coverage. It's going to set up a third down and 10. 322 left till halftime. 27 nothing. South Carolina State. It was just one of seven on third down, converting the first third down. And a 
third down call earlier on this drive. Here comes the pressure. And going towards the end zone, incomplete. Reads fast. Thomas Dixon had to make the adjustment. He was the receiver, Mason Harris, covering for the Bulldogs, and it's fourth down. And it was almost as if the defensive back was in better position than the wide receiver, like he knew what play was be coming. Fourth down. I mean, they are really calling a fantastic game. They have studied this offense from North Carolina Central through and through. In every play, the defense has a chance to win the battle at the line of scrimmage as well as in the secondary. Low Lake Parent, whose long field goal this year is 48 yards, will attempt a 45-yarder. Officials will respot the ball back just a little further. So we'll make this now a 46-yard attempt. <laughs> they move the ball back just a little bit. The hold to Jordan Reed. There's the kick. Has the distance. And the Eagles are on the board. Oleg Parent with a 46 yard field goal. Timeout. Media. What a, he hit a career high 48 yarder to end the first half last week at Harvard. He hits a 46 yarder late in the first half of this game to get the Eagles on the scoreboard. Guys. Looking forward to that, Matt. Thanks so much. Back here in Durham, 27-3, South Carolina State leading NC Central. Davian Clowney, who plays of course for South Carolina. Mel Kuyper was asked today on the network if he thinks his draft status has been hurt. Mel said no. He thinks Clowney's still ranking near the top. I think so. But you just don't make him like that. No. <laughs> you know when you see a, a, a physical specimen. Donald, that can play, that has a football instinct, so I can understand that. Taking it to five by Austin Smith. Hit it to 20, but stays on his feet. Up near the 26 yard line. McDonald advances the ball. Speaking of Jadavian Clowney, let's take a peek at our national news and notes. The service academies, fortunately, are cleared through October. They continue to play football. With the government shut down. Jerry Kill taking a leave of absence to take care of his health issues with epilepsy. And Jadavian Clowney has returned to practice. Status still uncertain, though, for Saturday's game against the Razorbacks. And I hope Coach Kill takes the time to get his health right. I mean, one of the best people you'll ever meet had a chance to cover him when he was at Northern Illinois and did a good, doing a good job in Minnesota. But your health is the most important thing you have. Question about that. Here's Andre Lewis Freeman. Get up there by Alante Tuppins. Game of just one. Alante, redshirt senior out of Charlotte. Now they're starting to crowd the line of scrimmage, having the outside linebackers in a stand-up position. And this is what you thought you would see from North Carolina Central to start the football game, aggressive around the line of scrimmage. Oh, jumps the flag. Passes over the head of Confusion on West. the play. <laughs> on the, the announcer just said confusion on the play. Offside. Defense number nine. Five yard penalty. Second down. Now Tuppens, who made the play on the previous play, is called for the offside. And you can tell Q was trying to take advantage of a free play there. The rest of the receivers didn't get they, the middle. They, didn't, they, didn't, <laughs> they, buy, yeah. they didn't run deep. And, and I like the decision by Q to, to change the snap count. We saw North Carolina Central, the previous possession, get a good jump on the snap count and disrupt the play. He went to a hard count and was rewarded with an offsides call. Second down and four. Bulldogs at their own 32. Just under two and a half minutes left in this first half from Durham. Q hands off. It was Freeman. Cuts back, makes a move across the 40 to the 44-yard line, first down. Andre Lewis Freeman goes for 13 yards there and moves the chains. That run is big. Because of the run in the first down, now South Carolina State's going with the hurry-up offense. Q 
Hugh keeping. It's a spin trying to turn the left corner. Hugh on the it's corner. About a yard, Eber. yard and a half. Stopped by Ty Brown. On the left side for one yard. North Carolina State has all three of their timeouts, but there's a, an Eagles player down. Second and nine. It's Brown who made the tackle on his belly there at the 47 yard line. Ty Brown's a, a guy who last year had two and a half tackles for loss in the ESPNU game. I was televised against Hampton back on October 18th. In a big game then, and now Redshirt Jr. Mike Brown trying to catch his breath there. See what happened when Brown made contact with Q. He kind of lowered his head. Yeah, well, I wonder if his head hit, lost control of his head as he was going to the ground. I wonder if the back of his head hit the turf, hit the turf kind of violently. Let's give a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Was, you could tell him he was nodding his head. He was responding to some inquiries there from the staff, but. Definitely looks like he's trying to at least shake out the cobwebs. Second down and eight coming up for South Carolina State. Again, the Bulldogs have all three of their timeouts. Just over two minutes to play in this first half. Play fake, sets up the wide receiver screen. Tyler McDonald now cuts it towards the sideline. And steps out about the 48-yard line. Tim Daniel pushed him out. They have made a deliberate effort to get Tyler McDonald as many touches as possible. And that, that's one of the adjustments I think they've made as the season has progressed. Realizing we can use him to offset the running game. McDonald now with six catches tonight. He's close to setting school records in a number of pass catching categories. Hugh slides down and they got hit late and the flag comes out. And that's going to extend the drive. He was going to be six yards shy After of the first the down. down. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 29 at the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Outside linebacker Neil Williams hit him late. And give credit to, to the referee Daryl Davis. He's been consistent in protecting players. And when the quarterback slides, feet first, plays over. He's surrendering himself. Don't touch him. Instead, Neil Williams goes down and tries to make contact with him on a defenseless player. And that's what the rules are for. He's defenseless on the ground. Black rolling under a minute and a half to go. Davis comes in motion into the slot on the right side. Q on first down to the sideline. He's got a man open. That's Caleb Davis who steps out. They mark him out at the 13. And here's South Carolina State with all three timeouts. And they have a first down deep in the Eagles territory again at 23. Great play call here. Everybody's focused on McDonald. And you should be. Watch McDonald. He's going to distract you. Once he distracts you, you're thinking he's coming to get the ball. Caleb Davis comes all the way from the third interior receiver position. Catch the ball downfield for a big game. Davis now wide to the left, and it's McDonald went out wide to the right side on this formation. There is Freeman inside the 10, the 5, pushing towards the goal line is stopped short at about the two or three-yard line. Eleven-yard gain for Dondre Lewis Freeman. Bulldogs marching again. Freeman now up to Lewis Freeman up to 55 yards rushing. And what do they do now? They get close to the end zone. They bring in the big back, number 44, Xavier Quick. Here's a touchdown run tonight and add another one. 
for the freshman Xavier Quick. And a two yard touchdown back in the first quarter. Runs in his second of the game, 33-3 Bulldogs. Well, they didn't need to use any of those three timeouts, Jim. There's still 45 seconds left in the half. Whoa. They just have no answers for the Bulldogs tonight. Belcher sneaks it inside that right upright. Eight play drive, 74 yards in less than two and a half minutes, but it was a late hit on the quarterback that helped extend the drive. Quarterback surrenders himself. Williams with the penalty for the first down and then long pass to Caleb Davis. Everybody was focusing on Tyler McDonald. They used him as a decoy. Then Xavier Quick's down in the football game, close to the goal line. He's probably going to get the football. What a first half for South Carolina State. Trying to go to 3-0 and in MIAC play. Uh, give me five, Jay, for our HBCU power rankings. Been a little change. We haven't had a change in a while. Number five on the bubbles, Alabama State. I still think they're a very good football team. They should be there. North Carolina A&T is on the bubble now. It was Alabama State, but A&T lost South Carolina State. We made a switch there. Number four, Jackson State. Really getting it done. Coach Kamaji's team is consistent. Number three, I, I, I may move them up. I was thinking, can you make a movement on the fly <laughs> I would do that, but number two is Tennessee State. Yeah. And all they do is keep winning. And if you think South Carolina State's defense is good, you ought to see Big Blue's defense. And number one is Bethune-Cookman. Now just imagine that matchup between Bethune Cookman and South Carolina State October in two weeks, I think, October 26. Woo! Woo! Kick off. Bounces that one. It's taken at the 15 yard line by Thomas Dixon. Hold down at the 34. There's a flag back where the kickoff occurred at the 35. He brings it out to the 34 yard line. We're going to be first at 10. Up, oh, back on the field. Offsides, kicking team, number 22. The five yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Correction, five yard penalty and re kick. Yeah, the option to re kick it here. Well, they wanted to make sure they didn't put it in the ha hands of Adrian Wilkins this late in the half and let him break one. And we got some commotion going on over on the South Carolina State sideline near the stands. Apparently, the young lady is being escorted somewhere other than where she is currently. People trying to leave the stands to get down on the field. And, and I will say, you know, one of the things about this stadium is the, the distance Your between the stands please. and the player and the teams Fans are probably as close as you can see. Onto the playing surface. Yeah, you can see some folks from the stands there on that side that are throwing things on to the South Carolina State sideline where the players are and we don't want to encourage that type of behavior so that's why we're not showing it to you but South Carolina State players are just kind of dancing around now just off the sideline onto the field to try to get away from the stand there's, there's a look from a wider shot the area that this commotion has been going on and that's a real close area I mean you're talking from the sideline to the bleachers is probably 10 yards tops and you have to fit 70 people in there. Fans are really on top of you, but it's not the way to go. <laughs> We're ready. We're ready. So just 38 seconds left in this first half. The team's huddling up to get ready to kick this once again after the offsides on the previous kickoff against South Carolina State. The 
South Carolina State trying to go to 3-0 in conference play with a win tonight. And they lost to Coastal Carolina to begin the season and then lost to Clemson. But then, bam, four in a row heading into tonight. And they're looking good right now tonight. And that's what's ahead at the Thune cookman matchup you mentioned on October 26th. And, you know, if you look at their body of work, I mean, Coastal's ranked in the top five in FCS football. So that's, you know, losing by a touchdown to them opening week of the season. Okay. Clemson, they, they hung in there. They hit Taj Boyd, had to bring him out the game. But you're not supposed to beat the number three team in all of college football. And the win versus North Carolina A&T was key. And Central, this if they can hold on for this victory, it would be a big one. And everybody mentioned the fact that the Bill Cookman, that's the number one team in HBCU football, has been for much of this football season. And, and I'm going to tell you, there's a rivalry between Buddy Pugh and, and Brian Jenkins. I mean, these two programs, I mean, Buddy Pugh has taken, has taken his Bulldogs down to Daytona Beach and beaten them. And last year, Brian Jenkins and the Wildcats returned the favor in Orangeburg. See Bethune Cookman right now at top HBCU top 10. And Howard this week. South Carolina State will have an off week next week before that matchup. Bethune Cookman on October 26th. Is that a good off week to have if you're South Carolina State? Now, is assuming that th this game goes the way this is, has been going. Now, if, you, if you've got some players that are injured, you need to get them healthy. But for, the, for them, they're playing at such a high level right now. But I, I do believe anytime you get to take an off week going into your most important matchup of the year, I think that extra week of preparation really does help. Back to receive for the Eagles. William Roker to kick off once again. Wilkins is standing at the 10. Let's see how Roper approaches this. If he's it in, does so. Down at the 37, recovered there. With number 95 for the Eagles. Daniel Rhodes covering. So just 35 seconds left in this first half as Jordan Reed brings the team back onto the field. Beginning at their own 38-yard line. No timeouts. Do you try anything creative here, Jay, or you just get ready to head to the locker room? You call a simple play on first down, and if you happen to break a tackle and make something happen, then you go into maybe a hurry up and try and get a couple throws into for the half. That's not going to do it. Right. May have gotten a face mask. Yeah. Flag comes out. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense, number 93, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. James Robinson called for grabbing the face mask. A pretty easy call to make, and that's, that's one of the dangerous versions of the face mask penalty. You let go. Now you've crossed midfield. The clock restarts. They don't have any timeouts, so... Should have taken advantage of the penalty, and now you make a couple throws into the end zone, I believe. Reed throws it across the middle. It's completed to 25, and they can't stop the clock with the exception of the movement of the chains. They're going to have to get up there quickly. Go, go kill it and give your kicker a chance. 22 yard gain. You need at least three seconds to spike the ball. So they're going to get one more crack or can't attempt a long field goal here. By the way, that 22-yard gain on the previous play is their longest play of the night. The Holy Parent hit one from 46 yards earlier in this quarter. They'll attempt a 42-yarder out of the hole to Jordan Reed. left and that's the end of the first half first half a first half dominated by South Carolina State they have a 34 3 lead here at the intermission now let's head to the studio for the Sports Center you halftime report here's Matt Schick and Charles Arbuckle guys Thank you, guys. South Carolina State having its way 34 to 3 over North Carolina Central in some MIAC football. Matt Schick along with Charles Arb. All right, thanks, fellas. And here's this week's HBCU breakdown. The Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference has four teams with a legitimate shot of advancing to the FCS playoffs. Since the fields expanded to 24 teams, only once has the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference gotten two teams in. 
But with North Carolina Central, North Carolina A&T, and Bethune-Cookman posting impressive non-conference victories this season, they've got a good opportunity. And South Carolina State head coach Buddy Pugh knows the Bulldogs have a legitimate shot with their only FCS loss coming this season to number five ranked Coastal Carolina. In the Southwestern Athletic Conference, the Western Division is a two-team race with Southern University and Prairie View A&M battling for supremacy. Southern holds the advantage over Prairie View by way of their 62-59 triple overtime shootout tiebreaker win. If it comes down to that one game, Prairie View A&M is going to be upset at their fate. But Southern University can't slip up because Prairie View A&M has an explosive offense, but both teams have the meat of their swap play in front of them. There are currently two HBCUs that are ranked in the national polls, with Bethune-Cookman coming in at number 13, leading the charge. Coach Brian Jenkins has the Wildcats in a great position to not only make it to the FCS playoffs, but with a great opportunity to potentially host an opening round game. In Division II football, Connell Maynard's Winston-Salem State Rams are currently the number 16th ranked team in the country. They want to finish up on the unfinished business they left last season when they were defeated in the championship game. Two more teams that are knocking on the door, Tuskegee in Division II and Tennessee State in the FCS. That wraps up this week's HBCU Breakdown. Thank you, Jay, to the FBS Sweden Day Caesar since becoming Minnesota's head coach. Dennis Rowe takes the swing pass very deep. In fact, into the end zone. 34 3. South Carolina State up at that. North Carolina Central's football team having some issues in the first half, but the band playing some sweet music. How about this marching the uh, sound machine band there at half? Second half coming up. The light bulb. College football primetime presented by McDonald's. Our Thursday night matchup here at the half from the BX. South Carolina State, Carolina State leading it 34 3 over NC Central. Well, I'll tell you what, a lot went right, Jay, in the first half for South Carolina State. Well, they decided to take advantage of the passing game outside to open up the running lanes, getting the ball to wide receivers in space and allowing them to run out the catch. And once they did that, they were able to bring in the big back, Xavier Quick, to punch it in for scores. And I think this is the theme of the first half. The defense, the relentless pressure that South Carolina State brought to this football game, they really capitalized on every opportunity, particularly when North Carolina Central made mistakes. They made them pay. That's what a good football team is going to do in a must-have contest. After the late hit on Q, kept that that drive alive. Quick got in for a second touchdown run. And the first half stats. Oh, don't show it. Don't show yeah, it. If you're an Eagles fan, you don't like to see that. And the rushing yards, negative five. And average yards per play, nearly six for the Bulldogs and just over one for the, uh, the uh, Eagles. And of the five first downs that North Carolina Central got in the first half, three of those came by way of penalty. So they really only had two first downs that they earned. Here we go, That's ladies not and the gentlemen, formula of the game, the but both teams came in here stressing the importance of. Well, last year, it, it was NCCU that won the game by 30 points in the Circle City Classic in Indy between these teams. And they're down by 31 as we begin the second half here in Durham. 2013, taking a D. And I'm really surprised. You knew the game would be physical, and South Carolina State wants to make it a tough game. But because of the things that North Carolina Central's gone through, these young men with having an interim coach and not having Henry Frazier get a coach and still getting some quality victories, really let me know that this was a tough football team. But that toughness has not been on display here tonight. Augustus is the back. Jordan Reed, the quarterback for North Carolina Central. They begin at their own 25-yard line. Scruggs, the receiver, wide to the left. Hand off. Augustus up near the 30. Means close to five on first down. Idrius Augustus last week had 82 yards rushing at Howard. I know the Eagles are down a bunch here, Jay, but they need to get it going any way they can, including the running game. Yep, down by 31 points. In an offense that has been, you know, non-existent, I think you have to just start throwing the football. It has to be hurry up to get yourself back into it. 
because there's no guarantee that your defense is going to figure out a way to stop the South Carolina State offense. There's Scruggs. That's Lamar Scruggs, about a yard shy of the first down where he's pulled down at the 34-yard line by Tyler Smith. And I do know this, that when you talk to Mike Adams, the defensive coordinator of South Carolina State, he said Jordan Reed has an arm that can beat you. He was nervous about Jordan Reed. Running the football, I think you allow Mike Adams to call his plays a little bit uh, with less, with more confidence. I would just unload and allow Jordan Reed to throw the football all over the field. Well, they continue this drive. They need to convert a third and short, third and one. And they have the first down, keeping it on the ground. On the running of Augustus. Gain of four, needed one, got four, first down. One of the few times they've been able to execute successfully. And almost a tackle for a loss by Reggie Owens, the defensive end for South Carolina State. Just missed it. North Carolina Central opens up the second half for the first down when they desperately need it. And their sixth first down of this game. A number of those in the first half came by a penalty, though. Cutting it outside. The 40, Augustus. A gain of two. Into the ball Malcolm Reed there, number 95, helping out on the stop. Reed is one of the veteran players, redshirt senior out of Atlanta. Both these teams came in unbeaten in conference play. Granted, NCCU just one conference game. That was a win last week at Howard. 37-28, got a couple of special teams touchdowns. North Carolina State opened up conference play with wins over Hampton, and then last weekend at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta over NCA and T, 29-24. Reed, and then the roll out right. It's a nice block to shake Malcolm Reed, and the pass drops at the 43-yard line by Deontay Wright. Um, and th these are the play selections I think you have to have. Allow Jordan Reed to make plays to try and get you back in this football game. He does everything right. Puts the ball right on the numbers of 28 Deontay Wright. But the running back not able to hold on to the football. Had he been able to catch it, he might have gone for a score. There was nobody behind him. So third down and eight. Instead of a first down pickup. Now they have to convert on third and long to extend the drive. And the play clock ran down, and now it'll be third and 13. Offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. And, and those are the little things that they're, they're inexplicable. You're a no-huddle offense. Your team is, you, you come out, they don't even huddle. They wait at the line of scrimmage. They look over to the sideline. You've got third and eight. Now you make a third and 13. Those are just things you cannot do in this type of football game. So now the line to gain for first down is their own 48. And Reed is sacked back at the 26-yard line. Looks like Alexander Glover was the first to get to him. He loses nine yards. And for Glover, his first sack of the night, he has three and a half on the year now. They really believe in bringing pressure up the middle. That's a philosophy of their defense, forcing the quarterback to make a decision to either leave the pocket to the left or to the right. That's Reggie <laughs> Owens on a stunt from his defensive end position. Nowhere for Jordan Reed to go with the football. You can say that again. Owens on one side, Glover on the other. And the sack, it's fourth down. You see the leaders in the FCS in sacks per game in South Carolina State. Adding to that total, second overall in the FCS in sacks per game. And a couple tonight that takes an Eagles roll inside the 35. Handle down at the 32. Well, it's a doubleheader of college football on ESPNU Saturday, first at 3.30. It's the All-State game of the week as Virginia takes on Maryland. And then at 7, Georgia Tech takes on BYU, presented by 5-Hour Energy. Both games are live on Watch ESPN. Match up at 3.30 Eastern on ESPNU. See that Virginia's won the last three games at Maryland, but Maryland has won two of the last three meetings overall. 
43 yard punt. Bulldogs with their first possession of the second half. Run for Justin Taylor, tackled by Jordan Miles. And right now, I think if you're South Carolina State, you want to run the football, put another you touchdown or two on the board, and then play. you want to lose control in the fourth quarter. Great ahead, Taylor to the 38. Where he's upended by Ty Brown, a gain of eight. Taylor's a good looking running back. Hard to believe that going into the football season when it started that he was number four on the depth chart. <laughs> that tells you they, they have some horses at the tailback position in South Carolina State. Well, you've had the Browns carry the ball. Charles Brown, Dondre Brown, we're talking about a previous game, Julius Pendergrass. Guys do not have carries tonight. Steps been quick for his Freeman and Taylor, and there's a catch by McDonald for a first down at the 47 yard line of the Eagles, wrapped up by Ryan Smith, but a gainer of 14. One of the few times we've seen North Carolina Central go with the blitz, trying to disrupt the timing of Richard Q. But when, when you've got a quarterback wide receiver in sync, it's like pitching and catching. Q to McDonald, first down. Eric Hemingway in motion to the left side of that formation. Now here comes McDonald in motion. Here's the jet sweep. But that was very well read and tackled for a long time. McDonald pulled out of bounds by Tasman Foster. Stopped by Tasman Foster. That's what they want him to do, be around the football. And you see him showing the athleticism to make the open field tackle on Tyler McDonald in space. Tasman Foster tackles per game, leading the MEAC. He had a 17-tackle game against Towson like on September 21st. Towson's a very good FCS team. Here's Taquan West out of bounds at the 37-yard line. It's a gain of 13, first down. Richard Q, you know, for and I'll go on record. I thought he, he was the weak link for this team. He's really impressive. He, he's becoming the strength. I am impressed with Richard Q and the throws that he's able to make. His leadership has really improved, and I think Richard Q has gone from being a liability to he's now an asset. Well, Taylor would not go down. He's all the way up to the 25. You see the FCS top 10. Towson's there at number two behind North Dakota State. Back, Run again. Justin Taylor Run again. for a couple of yards. Yeah. North Dakota State, they just keep winning. They, they, they know how to get that, it done there, that, don't that, they? That's the program. That is the Alabama equivalent in the FCS Alabama. football. That's a very good analogy, Park. Defense is good. They've got a quarterback that just wins football games. And they can beat FBS teams. They've proven that. <laughs> Taylor. Now well, the pass faked the handoff to Taylor. And an incompletion will bring up third down and eight. Richard Q, he's a redshirt senior, started 10 of the 11 games last year for South Carolina State. And you know what happened last year? You know, last year was not a great year. They had their first losing season in 11 years in South Carolina State. Bulldogs looking to improve to 5 and 2 overall and 3 and 0 in conference. They win here tonight. Incomplete. Monte Tuppins was in pursuit of Q that time. You know, last year, 5 and 6, but uh, historically, the Bulldogs have been a dominant program. And it was tough because I think last year was something that Coach Buddy Pugh had never gone through. They, they took those big money games. That was something they never really done before. They went to Arizona. They played Oklahoma. So they played some tough, tough teams out there. Got beat up in the process. So not only did they lose the games by big scores, but the players were injured and they were never able to recover throughout the season. Senior Nicholas Belcher will attempt a 40-yard field goal off the left hash out of the hold of Q. It has plenty of distance and is good. So Belcher, a 40-yard field goal, and South Carolina State adds to the lead. It's 37 to three. Media. Love drama.
Dallas tonight's Bringing the Flavor brought to you by McDonald's from Durham, North Carolina. MEAC football 37 3. South Carolina State leading NC Central. Had a little bit of rain earlier, but for the most part, it's been dry tonight. It's been cloudy, a little bit cool here in Durham. Of course, Durham, the home of NC Central. The Duke campus just a few miles away. Of course, Durham is also known as one of the famous minor league baseball cities. Ruby Bull Durham. Some people may not know Jay Walker didn't play for or against the Durham Bulls, but he did play minor league baseball. Pitch was going to bring it. Yeah. Strikeout pitch was a little 12 6 curveball I had. You don't see many uh, nose to toes curveballs these days. Don't see mine too often either, but uh, no, that was, that was the pitch. That's true. It's kind of outdated now, isn't it? Yeah. It still can be effective. Cultures kick off. On the two, Wilkins makes something happen. Tackled at the 15, and South Carolina State's done a nice job tonight of containing Adrian Wilkins, who had an 89-yard punt return for TD at Howard last week, but also had a 100-yard kickoff return at Charlotte earlier this season on September 14th. So impressive, you know, hate to make the South Carolina State show, but it is what it is. I mean, when this game started, it was a pretty hostile environment. Yes. I mean, the crowd was in here. The South Carolina State folks were dealing with the fans and the issues there. And they just have negated this crowd and just really brought, brought it to North Carolina Central this evening. Augustus. Oh. Oh. McFad. Mario McFad lay in the wood. Wow. Is, is this like, is this like, not the pile driver, this looks like the Undertaker's move. Textbook. Oh, that's form tackling. It is. Hit him, wrap him into the ground. Mario McFadden's having a good football game. You know, and they've done a lot, obviously, with the, the rules and the penalties changing for player safety, but that's the kind of tackle that's just going to be a good football tackle forever in this in this sport. Boy, that was some play. Justin Hughes there. Going to hand on that pass attempt, and it's third and nine. But they're in the right place. I mean, that, that last play you saw Bulldog defenders breaking before the North Carolina Central receivers were turning around to look for the football. The scouting report they did has been fantastic for South Carolina well, State. I was just going to say, Jay, you know, we just saw Mike Adams, the defensive coordinator there for the Bulldogs. And you got to give a lot of credit to the game plan he's put out there tonight. His team has executed it well. Oh, snap. Reed has it, but he already has a defender in his face, and he's tackled. Back at the 13 yard line, Alexander Glover. Third sack for the Bulldogs tonight. And North Carolina Central, you gotta bring it up. This is a good team they're beating. This is the team with the winning record. A team that's undefeated in conference play and South Carolina State is, is making this look easy. Matthew Cornelius to punt, he's standing in his own end zone. Seventh punt tonight for the Eagles. Coming up, taken at the 37-yard line. And up to the 34, Drummond South the Carolina return. State's Everett Gibbons. Well, when we come back, Walker's Weekend Watch. What you need to keep an eye on this weekend on the college football scene, courtesy of one Jay Walker. 50 plus points this year. I mean, that'll be three straight years that they had 50 or more points. I, I don't know if he returns back to Austin. That could be, you know, the nail in the coffin. That's Micah Martin, who's the long snapper for NCCU, and he's a local Durham kid. A sophomore helped off the field, not putting much weight at all on those legs. South Carolina State beginning at the 33 yard line of NCCU and a handoff to Justin Taylor. Gain of three up near the 30 yard line. I think this is the point of the game if you're South Carolina State. You, 
minimize the playbook. You don't show your hand too much. You try and rush for some yards, get a score, and then you take out your starters for the rest of the football game. And they snapped the football with 25 on the play clock. Pass completed to McDonald, and he has a first down to the 21. Tackled by Ryan Smith, the eight of nine. I was curious, Jay, with this big lead, would the offense, the no huddle offense, slow down a little bit? But really, they're staying at the pace they've been playing at all game. They are. I think you do that for one more score. Right. You know, if your offense can go out there and execute the game plan, put another touchdown on the board, then I think you minimize it and deflate the football. Q fake the handoff, passes to Hemingway. Run out around the 15. The mark about the 16. The Montre Ryland. The tackle for the Eagles. Well, he's a big target, 6'5". And, and look at the play action. I, I would feel so nervous if I was Richard Q. Watch the delay that he really carries out this. His back is completely turned to the defense for a long period of time. I'd get a little nervous. This time he does hand it off to Taylor, and he's inside the five. First and goal. South Carolina State. Ryan Smith again running him down and prevented him from finding the end zone. First and goal from the four for the Bulldogs. And out of a pistol set and Q to the end zone, broken up incomplete. Just inside the end zone, intended for Tyler McDonald. McDonald last week, three catches. 97 yards and a touchdown in Atlanta in the win over NCA and T. And CQ's numbers, you've, you've been impressed tonight, Jay. Two weeks in a row, he's played football at a very high level. The Bulldogs have been rewarded with victories. Winner of four straight games, he's starting to figure out the quarterback, the position, and play it very well. 44 is in the game for South Carolina State. That's quick. He already has a couple of touchdowns tonight, trying to make it three. Ooh, he got hit hard. Right after going out of bounds and a late flag as a result comes in. Jordan Miles gave him that late lick. And he looked like he was quite a ways out of bounds. But this time they tried to stretch it to the outside. He's out of bounds and <laughs> he was giving up on the run. After the play, personal foul. Number 10, the defense, late hit out of bounds. At the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Result of the penalty is a first and goal for South Carolina State. More mistakes from NCCU. And a tough night for interim head coach Dwayne Foster and his Eagles. And off and into the end zone. Touchdown, Dondre Lewis Freeman. The sophomore punches it in from a yard out. His first touchdown of the night, fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Six plays. Started with great field position, only needed 33 yards in a minute 36 to find the end zone. Belcher's point after. Up and good. Belcher's kick is good. Touchdown for Dondre Lewis Freeman. One of a number of Bulldogs that have found the end zone tonight in their 44-3 lead. ESPNU College Football Prime Time. Brought to you by Chrysler. Imported from Detroit. And Joseph A. Bank. We fit most everyone. JOSBank.com. Glad you could join us for this MEAC matchup on a Thursday night from Durham, North Carolina. Mark Neely along with Jay Walker and our ESPN crew. 44-3, South Carolina State. They started early, Jay. They have not let up, and they have kept Adrian Wilkins very quiet on special teams tonight for the Eagles. William Roper's kickoff. From the five, Thomas Dixon. 20. Across the 25, up to the 27 yard line. Dixon, a senior out of Maryland. 
Marlboro, Maryland. Comes Jordan Reed once again. Next game for North Carolina Central is their homecoming matchup against Morgan State here on 19th of October. Reed pressured again, just throws it away. Really wasn't a receiver in the vicinity. South Carolina State's defense, like myself, I think, kind of looking for a There's flag no foul on that. For intentional grounding. Number 25 was the intended receiver. Second uh, down. If you say so, Augustus was the intended <laughs> receiver. <laughs> They're trying to set up a screen, but, but once again, that this hasn't that been the recurring theme? Every play they call, South Carolina State has the answer for. And either, and it all starts with pressure up the middle, attacking the interior line of North Carolina Central. Reed's pass, boy, and he, that was dangerous. Wilkins reaching for it, didn't really expose himself, but he's about to take a big hit, but it's incomplete in third down. I think the challenge in this game has become for South Carolina State, how many times can they prevent North Carolina Central from crossing midfield? I mean, it's been that type of performance. Here's the defensive coordinator, Mike Adams, whose team his unit, that defense for the Bulldogs, has had some night tonight. Reed looking and then he's going to get tackled from the backside at the 25. And it'll be fourth down. That's Alexander Glover, number 56, once again. But this for the South Carolina State defense. Now, granted, their first two games. You know, Coastal Carolina, all right, but they played at Clemson, gave up 52 points and a loss, 52-13. But since then, wow. They've been on fire, and they're, they're starting to gel. And this is a unit that's aggressive, and when you have a complicated defensive scheme, such as the Bulldogs, you, know, you play your best football as the season goes on, and they're playing at a very high level. Clemson, what did Clemson put 54 points on, I believe? And yeah, 52, yeah. Coastal put 27. I mentioned it earlier, Coastal is a top five program. Drummond on the football. return. Playoff team from a season ago. So the fact that, that that's when I think Coach Pugh knew he had a, a special football team. When, when they took on a Coastal oh, Carolina yeah. team that had made it to the playoffs, had won a game in the playoffs last season, and then had everybody coming back. And South Carolina State was in a position to win that football game. Buddy Pugh, the head coach of South Carolina State, who's a native of Orangeburg, played in SCSU on the offensive line in the mid-70s. Now he's in his 12th season as the head coach at his alma mater. You see he replaced the legendary head coach, Willie Jeffries, incomplete pass. pass the Dean and the MEAC has four Incomplete. titles as well to boot. Spent five years as an assistant at South Carolina under Lou Holtz. Four MEAC titles, two outright, 2008 and 2009. We shared a couple, one in 2004 and then the other in 2010. That was picked up at the 32-yard line by Lewis Freeman, so they'll lose significant yardage there. The line of scrimmage was the, their own 48. Take a look what happened here. It's, that was just a, not a good snap from Tristan Bellamy. Yeah, Tristan Bellamy just pulled it to the left. Too low for Q to go down and get it. Good job by Lewis Freeman recovering the errant snap. Third and but 25. A few things that this offensive unit's done wrong tonight. Lost 15 yards. Bellamy, who's one of the vocal leaders in that offensive line for South Carolina State. If you're a center and that's going to happen, better you do it when you're up 44-3. <laughs> Then if it's a uh, much tighter ball game. Huge pass intended for Tyler intended. McDonald. McDonald incomplete. We haven't seen a whole lot tonight. The punter for the Bulldogs, Belcher. This is just his second punt. Wilkins back at the 30-yard line for NCCU. Here's 
Haskins accepts it at the 26 and then a little, a little juggle and had to retreat all the way back to the 21. So it's a lost yardage on the return after a 41 yard punt. ESPN News coverage of high school football continues tomorrow and four star recruit and UCLA commit Austin Roberts leads Carmel against in state rival Pike in Indiana. Find out who gets bragging rights. On the Geico ESPN High School Football Showcase, Pike versus Carmel tomorrow at 8 on ESPNU. Also live on Watch ESPN. Roberts ranked 173 in the ESPN 300, committed to UCLA. Dominic Booth, 182, is committed to Butch Jones in Tennessee. And then left, Quattis Tucker, 5'6", running back. Just under three minutes to play in this third quarter, 44-3, South Carolina State. Right now, the back. His pass is caught at the 27-yard line. And quickly smothered there. Gain of five. Number 80, Marvin Poole, with the reception. Nowhere to go. And I think when you look at North Carolina Central, what do they need to improve is when we talk to the coaches, they said, we don't really have any game breakers. You know, we ask, well, give us a wide receiver. You know, most of the teams are winning have good offenses. We ask them for a name, and they say, oh, well, He's special. We asked them, well, we do it by committee. And I think they're looking for one of these receivers to emerge as a game breaker. And that's what's lacking from this offense. And the trips lined up to the left side. Reed, though, going to the far side of the field where he's got the coverage of Poole one on one, but incomplete at the 45 of South Carolina State. Davius Chestnut, though, was running stride for stride with Poole. Fourth down and NC Central to punt. We have seen a lot tonight of their punter, Matthew Cornelius. Carl Jones, the long snapper now, and back to receive the punt from South Carolina State. There he is, Drummond. Low snap from Jones, but Cornelius gets it away, and the fair catch at the 43 yard line. Well, Herman Ike Boone, is that name ring a bell? Well, if you're a movie fan, you'll know of him. He's an NC Central alum, went to Williams High School as the football coach, won a Virginia State title, and his story inspired the movie Remember the Titans. And any time you can get Denzel Washington to play you in a movie, things are going all right. I, I, I really thought Denzel was a coach. You mean Denzel didn't coach that team? In real he life, was, he was acting. He, he, that was he was acting. Yes, he did Zell. New quarterback to Darius Wiley for South Carolina State. Andre Lewis Freeman, the one, the ball carrier for Andre Lewis Freeman. So it looks like we've seen the last of Richard Q tonight. And I'm going to ask you this, Jay. We knew coming in. We we said at the top of the telecast, the defense for South Carolina State tenacious, and they lived up to that billing tonight. Pass from Wiley. It's incomplete, but the flag. McDonald, flag on the field. defender, flying his, in his direction. Offside. Defense, number nine. Five yard penalty. Second down. Monte Tuppence called for being offsides. The defense playing like we assumed, but you mentioned Richard Q really impressed you tonight. If he plays as well as he did tonight, throughout the rest of the season. Not only really South Carolina nine. State a force in the end, but like one of the top teams in HBC football. Yeah, they can be. Seconds, I mean, play clock, 25 seconds. seconds. You know, and outside of that, I mean, one of the best in FCS football. I mean, this is yes. a team where, you know, we're talking about the HBC breakdown where the MIAC has done enough as a conference with some non-conference victories to, to justify having two teams to make it to the postseason. So the winner of the conference will get the automatic bid. There's no question about that, but who's that second team going to be? Is it going to be North Carolina a &T? Is it going to be South Carolina State? Wiley. Cook. So those are the teams now. I think, you know, Central is probably going to fall off that list now with this loss. 
So that's the question. And when Q is playing healthy, this defense is good enough to win a championship. I mean, and this is a program that has experience in the FCS. They traveled to Appalachian State in consecutive years and really gave them a good run for the money. So this is the team when you watch them. They're not trying to show that they're one of the best teams in black college football, but they think they're one of the premier programs in FCS football. Third down and five to Darius Wiley, the quarterback. He lets it go high and incomplete over the head of Taquan West. So it is fourth down, 31 seconds left in this third quarter. And then the flip side of that, you know, you talk about North Carolina Central. What do they have to do? I think many people feel they were a season ahead of schedule. You know, by them only making the move up to the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference in 2010 and then competing for a championship in 13, that would be that would be remarkable if they were able to pull it off. But you do have to wonder, not having Coach Frazier there, what's the lingering effect going to be? He definitely had the program going the right direction. They beat this Bulldog team handily last year. And this year they get the tide turned on them, so they've got questions. And we're down at inside the five. Well, Richard Q tonight, quarterback for South Carolina State. At the quick release, decisive with the football. Getting the ball to his playmakers in space, carrying out the running game, the mental aspects of that, showing athleticism. Besides the early mishap he had earlier, when he came out throwing darts. Really, really showed something in terms of being the leader of this offensive unit. That Q was picked off on the first drive of the game. So that's where the INT came from. But one touchdown pass, that was the the first one to row of 36 yards that gave them the seven nothing lead but just under 200 yards passing for Q tonight. And I really like how after he threw the interception in the first series forgot about it and moved forward and didn't come close to throwing another one after that. Wilkins. Rolling out to the edge but no gain. That's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. We'll head to the fourth with South Carolina State owning a 44-3 lead. And yes, they've played well offensively, but how about the defense tonight for South Carolina State? They've been punishing. They found the end zone and lead it 44-3. Virginia, Maryland at 3.30. Well, our game summary as we head to the fourth quarter, you see South Carolina State has dominated really from the get-go and the, the big numbers right there at the bottom, the total yards, 347 to 40. They've been single-handedly one of the best performances we've seen all season long. North Carolina Central has to be thoroughly disappointed in this one, but the player Richard Q and the South Carolina State defense are the big stories of this evening's contest. Second down and 10 for NCCU. They have it at their own eight yard line and from his own end zone now stepping out. Reed, nice pass and he finds him in stride. Across midfield, tackled at the 42 yard line. That's Shahid Swinson. Red shirt freshman eventually run down by Tevin Richard. 50 yard gain. In fourth quarter, South Carolina State bringing in some of the backups and right away they give up a deep play. <laughs> Not going to make Coach Mike Adams or head coach Buddy Pew particularly pleased. Good throw by Jordan Reed. Well, we just showed you the game summary. They had 40 yards of total offense entering the fourth quarter. In the first play of the fourth quarter, they go for 50 on one play. Take advantage of the personnel that, that you're playing against. You know, you know, you look at South Carolina State, and it seems like the only starter I see on the field is, is Mason Harris as well as Darius Drummond. So they've got backups in there. And good job of exploiting the backup for North Carolina Central. No snap, and Reed gathers it, and he's throwing towards the end zone. Thomas Dixon, the intended receiver. A little overthrow, a little over his head, but it started with that low snap. And these are some of the plays that I thought that North Carolina Central should have tried early in the football game. When you knew you couldn't run the football, you've got to do something to loosen up the defense and keep them on their heels. It's a 
to the sideline after that passing completion. Third down to nine for NCCU. Three of 13 on third down. Tonight came in converted 36% on the season. And a timeout called by the Eagles. Timeout. North Carolina Central. It's their first charge timeout of the half. It's a 30 second timeout. Blake Clack was winding down. They use a timeout. We'll step aside as well. The Mideastern. Visit watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Well, let's revisit our impact players, and pretty much it goes along with the theme of the night here, Jay. The uh, Bulldogs, two players that we highlighted have had nice nights, and the two Eagles really have not. Tyler McDonald showed up. He was a playmaker. I think Tasman Foster made tackles for North Carolina Central, but not enough big plays. No tackles for losses behind the line of scrimmage. That was what they were going to need from him if they were going to slow down the ball down. Reed on third down and nine. Tackled at the 39 yard line by Tevin Richard. And two fourth down, and a late flag comes out. Will Davis, our referee tonight. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 54 of the offense, 15-yard penalty, fourth down. It's on the center, Keaton Burgess, true freshman in Sumter, South Carolina. This week was his first start since coming back. Dinged up a little early in the season. Freshman mistake, more frustration there from Burgess. Whistle blown, just kind of went over and just took a shot at one of the South Carolina State defenders. Should be a learning moment for Burgess and his young college football player. There's Drummond back to receive this Matthew Cornelius punts. Good punt from Cornelius and Drummond back to the 10. 20, 25. Bounds at the 26-yard line. Let's take a look at our MIAC headlines for this week. Three MIAC players on the Jerry Rice Award watch list. That goes to the FCS top first-year player. In fact, Michael Jones, North Carolina Central, is on that list as a cornerback for the Eagles. Seth Higgins, Offensive Player of the Week. Oregon State and charges dismissed against former coach Henry Frazier the third of NCCU and he was let go in August and his contract terminated after violating a domestic violence protective order against his ex-wife but as we just saw those charges he's been cleared of those charges now he, he's been denied an appeal late September for reinstatement so that's where the, the Frazier story lies right now. At the end of the day you got a program here in limbo in terms of the direction of the program what's the next step and some questions that have to be answered and asked down here in North Carolina. Charles Brown in the game he gets the carry to the 36 there is Jones we mentioned Michael Jones the starting quarterback from NCCU is on that watch list for the Jerry Rice Award. Four picks coming into this game, leading the FCS. Look at the pass, Wiley, complete. Intended for Gibbons. This is to that point where I know it's the spread offense and you use plenty of shotgun. You've got a 41 point lead with, with, with 12 minutes to go on a team that hasn't even really threatened your defense at all. Suggesting the ground game be a little more prominent? I, I, I would think so. Darius Wiley, the quarterback, second series that he is quarterback. Darius, who's the younger brother of former South Carolina State quarterback, Derek Wiley, and this is a nice run for Dennis Rowe. We had the 36-yard touchdown catch to start the scoring tonight in the first quarter, a 39-yard gain. Rose done a good job on these screens. Really making the first person miss, but that's too far to allow somebody. Look, he's untouched. Come on. 39 hits somebody. 
Sayyid Muhammad, you got a wide receiver running on your heels, turn around and knock the ball from him. Poor tackle. 39 yard gains, the longest play of the night for South Carolina State. Charles now, Brown, the ball carrier. Loses his footing down at the 25, no gain. No gain on the play, second and 10. In all South Carolina State, they led 17 0 at the end of the first quarter, led 34 3 at the half. We get 44 3 here, still relatively early in the fourth quarter. Erling straight ahead, and perhaps now, now the, the ball carrier. Play calling, channeling what Jay was mentioning just a short time ago and running the football once again, Charles Brown. He's off the gas pedal. Charles Brown has received limited repetitions this year running the football. And you don't see any of the big playmakers out there. You don't see Caleb Davis or Tyler McDonald on the field, backup quarterback in there. Only starters in there are the offensive line. Tight end Hemingway. Other than that, they're giving the starters a rest. Good job. Well done. Let the play, got, play clock get down to six before they snap it. The pass completion inside the 10. Wiley's pass. Complete the Austin Smith. Austin Smith. Junior out of Rex, Georgia. The quarterback is a freshman. In 2011, then they redshirted him last year. Have him catching passes this season. Ninth trip into the red zone tonight for the South Carolina State offense. It's a first and goal from the nine. Quick. A couple of touchdown runs tonight. One from two yards, actually both from two yards out. You can see why Quick is their, their goal line runner. He's not going to give you any cuts. <laughs> you know, if you call the play to the left side off, off tackle, that's where he's running. Not too much shake in his game, but that's what it takes to be a really effective goal line runner. Give it to Quick. Bounces off one tackle, cuts back, and he says, take that, Jay Walker. <laughs> yeah. There's my moves, man. On the Showed me a nice change of direction. <laughs> Play was designed to go to the outside. Absolutely nowhere to go. They sniff it out pretty well. He decides to cut back, and then he gets north-south. So he's going to get north-south on you sooner or later. <laughs> Third and goal from the five for the Bulldogs. Quick still in there, and he has the football once again. Hurdles lost it. And it's recovered in the end zone for a touchback by NCCU. Recovered by Saeed Muhammad, who was scolded a little earlier by Jay as well. And he comes up with the recovery in the end zone. And that's what you can't do there. The one thing about quick, so often running backs leave their feet, but now you're starting to see bad things happen when you leave your feet. He wants to hurdle. You're exposed in the air. Good job by Jasmine Foster, number four, is going to run around the block and punch that football out of there. Muhammad with the recovery, so the touchback brings it out to the 20-yard line for NCCU. 9.22 to go here in Durham. Play clock right game, game. Offense, five-yard penalty, first down. And that's the type of penalty you get on the road. I mean, you get the turnover, you're a quarterback, you know the 25-second clock is in your home stadium. On the road, you know, you may not be accustomed to where it is, but that, that can't happen. Reed. Rolling out to his right and throws his strike to the 33-yard line, and that is a completion of Marvin Poole. Complete to Marvin Poole. He's been their leading pass catcher this season. Coming into tonight. Has a second catch of this game, so he has 17 total on the year to lead in CCU. Over Wilkins and then McFadden had it right in his hands for a pick. 
could not catch him. The ball's going to get away from him. You see McFadden slips, and oh, he's got to make that. He plays DB for a reason. One of the top tacklers all year. Reed pressured again from the edge, and he's going to go deep. One on one coverage there, and he throws, overthrows the intended receiver, Demario Johnson. Mason Harris had the coverage on him. Mason Harris, the fifth year senior from Virginia Beach, has played a pretty good football game. Every time they throw the football in his direction, he's been right there, stride for stride with his receiver. It kind of highlights the point of what the offensive coordinator, Michael Bryant, said for. Central, that deep play threat, that guy that's a flat out burner, they're lacking that in this offense for North Carolina Central. Converted two of 13 third downs tonight and sacked back at the 20. Fifth sack tonight for South Jordan Carolina Reed. State. Juan Brock, number 29, with the sack, his second of the year. They're gonna bring the blitz, just a good move. Interior pressure, that's been their theme. They like to blitz up the A gap, bring their best defensive rush. Up the middle of the field, the A gap as it's known, and consistently, North Carolina Central's not been able to have an answer for it. Tough night for Jordan Reed and NC Central. The Eagles punting again. Cornelius. His better punts of the night, and he's had a lot of them. Off to him, it's hands recovered by NC Central, it appeared, maybe. Nope, South Carolina State may have jumped back on it. Now the Eagles had it for a moment, but then it came free again, and South Carolina State recovers. Recovered by Philip Henry. 8.02 to play here in the fourth quarter in Durham. Time now for your AT&T All-America Player of the Week, running back Jawan Edwards of Ball State. Last weekend against Virginia, 24 carries, 155 yards, and three touchdowns in the win over the Cavaliers. Get out your mobile phone and text VOTE to 34763 to vote for the All-America Player of the Week. Yeah, thank you very much. It's kind of funny that uh, Jay, you and I at halftime were talking about the Mac. Football. State. I, I like that conference because it's really good quarterback play that you're going to get from there. You know, being a former quarterback, anytime you can throw the football around, that helps. But I'm not used to getting highlights on running backs taking over the Mac. Come on, now. that's the conference of, of Ben Roethlisberger and all those guys. There have been a lot of outstanding quarterbacks. It's come out of the Mac, carried by Charles Brown, gain of five, second down and five. See the play clock there now at 20. With this sizable lead, South Carolina State. As much of that as they can. Still hiking with 11 on the play clock. To the 26 yard line, Brown once again. Tyron Guyon. Inside linebacker with the tackle of Charles Brown. Temple in Cincinnati, next game up on ESPN Networks on ESPN. Tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern time. The first down, he's makes a cut to the sideline and he's out of bounds. Nope, not yet. Still carrying the pile inside the 40. No, to the 39. 36 yard game. Push call just run it off tackle. Stretch play to the outside. Great block downfield by number 54, Charles Henderson. He's had a good football game. In the end, it's just Charles Brown refusing to go down. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, please check your personal belongings and see if you have lost yes. your second Even the clock key. rolling, 6.15 to go in this fourth quarter. Your keys, we have them here at the announcer's booth. Look at that, 
164 yards to 100. Dominating performance by the Bulldogs. CCU had 40 total yards coming into the fourth quarter. And running there by Quick, bounced off one tackler. Quick, on the carry. Pushed out by Muhammad. Did go out of bounds, stopping it with 5.52 to go. See, and I put that on the coach. See, when you got a guy that's a straight ahead runner, don't call the off tackle play for him because he's going to end up out of bounds. He's going to hit people <laughs> and have contact. Call the play for him in between the tackles. The third series that Darius Wiley has been the quarterback for South Carolina State. A nice night for the starter, Richard Q. Numbering forward to the 38. Was Brown. Brown the There's Wiley, the quarterback in there for South Carolina State. Now, he's had an interesting career. Lost his redshirt year early. His brother was a starting quarterback at the school before he was there. Derek? Yep. Yeah, and Derek was injured. And then they had to lose the redshirt year for Tadarius. And then he got the redshirt back last year. So that's why he heard the name for a while. He's just a sophomore. Next year, Take the training wheels off it. Be his opportunity to start a job. Wins picked up. Screen. Austin Smith to the 36, 37 yard line. Gain of two. And it will be fourth down. It's going to bring out Hunter Nicholas Belcher. Green Wilkins back at his own nine. And then some movement on the line. False start. Offense, number 29. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Backs him up another five yards. Belcher angling it to the far side. The bounce at the four and be down at the one. Just outside the goal line. Time out by Tevin Richard. Media. Nice punt. And down inside the one by Richard. So NC Central will begin deep in their own end with 343 to go. Virginia, Maryland at 3.30, then Georgia Tech BYU, Saturday on ESPNU. Team is not something you do alone. Team is plural. Team is arms, legs, blood. Sweat and soul. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And in part by Wrangler. We comfortable jeans guaranteed. The NCCU marching sound machine. It's the South Carolina State Bulldogs that have been making the noise tonight. 44-3 over NC Central. He goes pinned inside their own one to start this drive. See the safety of the South Carolina State defense provided this year. Malcolm Bell now the quarterback in his pass. Incomplete, intended for Thomas Dixon. So now we see the extra freshman from Richmond, Virginia in the game for NCCU. Be careful right now, Malcolm. You're in dangerous territory. You've got a defense that smells blood. An opportunity to get into the record books with the safety. The backup players in there not. They're going to bring some pressure. Fourth game that Bell has gotten into this year. That was his 11th pass attempt of the season. Three for 11 now on the year through the year.
Timeout. North Carolina Central. It's a second charge timeout of the half. It's a 30-second timeout. One timeout left now for the Eagles with 338 left. Well, the ESPN has a doubleheader of football Saturday evening. At 5 p.m. Eastern, 18th-ranked Michigan takes on Penn State. Then at 8.30, 8th-ranked Texas A&M takes on Mississippi State. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. And both games are also live on Watch ESPN. Evan Gardner, what he's done against the Big Ten, what he's done against non-conference opponents, the Wolverines. I'm playing quarterback for the Wolverines, number 98, yeah. Evan Gardner. <laughs> Don't see that number on a quarterback very often. Usually you see like a seven, but Jay Walker used to wear a 17. 98 playing homage to Tom Harmon. Brought it out of retirement. Right. Mark's dad. Great player back in the day. Able to get out of the end zone and up to the six yard line. With the carry. Right. The HBCU postgame report coming up. Brought to you by Lexus. Those are the headlines. South Carolina State. Dominant night offensively and defensively here in Durham. From the end zone, now out of the end zone, Bell. Wrapped up, tackled for a loss, a sack, six sack of the night for the oh, South Carolina there. State defense. Quan Brock, number 29, end of the stat total. And I'm thinking somewhere down in Daytona Beach, Florida, Brian Jenkins is saying, I'm not worried about him. <laughs> Deep down, he needs to be worried about him. Tim Cookman and South Carolina State, not far down the road. That will be a showdown. We will have a little Cookman takes on Howard University. That won't be an easy one because Howard has a quarterback. Every time you have a quarterback, you can win a game against any given team on this level of football. The Eagles 12th punt of the night. Well covered. 2.14 to go here in the fourth quarter. Timeout. Media. Like a child, this Cree LED bulb could be in your house. Dominating performance tonight for South Carolina State. Still 2.14 to go here in the fourth quarter. Well, it's a doubleheader of college football on ESPNU Saturday. First at 3.30, it's the All-State Game of the Week. As Virginia takes on Maryland. And then at 7, Georgia Tech takes on BYU. Presented by Five Hour Energy. Both games are live on Watch ESPN. you got to be nervous if you're Randy Edsel in Maryland, quarterback. C.J. Brown goes down, you're thinking, not, not, not again. That's coming off the season where they went through five quarterbacks. Now you lose C.J. Brown for a period of time. Adrian Colick becomes the third quarterback of this game for South Carolina State. Richard Freshman, 6'2", 200 pounder out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. South Carolina State, first and 10 from the 41. Bulldogs begin this drive with first down at the 41 of the Eagles to carry Charles Brown. So 39, so just a gain of two for Brown. Started. Wiley got a handful of series as the quarterback, and now Adrian Collick. And then they have to go. Brown bumps off one tackler and tumbles forward to the 35. Don Brown, the ball carrier. Three yards shy of the first down. Say this: the band and the cheerleaders remained active. 
North Carolina Central. Kept us entertained all evening. Couldn't fire up the football team, though. And a tough night for the Eagles. Yes, the question's been answered. You know, people wondered, were, were they for real this year? Not to say they're not for real, but to compete with the big boys, the question remain. And just three years into the FCS process up to Division II, not quite there yet. And the play clock runs all the way down. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. Attention, North Carolina Central Band, you are reminded for a conference policy, you are not to play while the offensive team is at the line of scrimmage. You know, and I, I give credit to Bill Davis, the official. He, he's been giving them a pass all game because the game's been out of reach for a while. And, and they've been playing straight through in the fourth quarter. It didn't matter who had the football. So he gave them a warning just now. <laughs> a marching sound <laughs> machine and Bill Davis. Okay. Now <laughs> he gives him a nod. Okay. Come on, Bill. Give him a break. We need something to keep us going. South Carolina State will improve to five and two. It'll be the fifth win in a row. It'll be three and zero in Deion Clay. Round. Once again, North Carolina Central will fall to three and three overall, one and one in conference. And South Carolina State tonight, Jay. They came out firing early, with the exception first drive. Q was picked off, but after that, the offense rolled. The defense played well, and Buddy Pugh's Bulldogs have now won five in a row. You know, one thing about Coach Pugh, he, he remembers. He's got a memory. He's the dean of the MEAC coaches, and last year, North Carolina Central put a good thumping on him in the season that wasn't a, a good season for Buddy Pugh, less than 500 win percentage. But how about this for a response? The Bulldogs, after losing the first two of the season, they've rolled off five straight. We welcome you to the Lexus HBCU post game reports. South Carolina State dominating performance tonight here in Durham over NC Central 44 3. The final score. Let's take a look at the highlights from this MIAC matchup tonight. Richard Q played well in this football game, Jeff. Commanded the offense shown by Richard Q, the quarterback, the senior, having a fantastic senior season, getting the ball to playmakers, but the offensive line for South Carolina State, they were really the key to this one, allowing them to run the football, and defensively, they just completely dominated this North Carolina Central offense from the opening play to the end of the game. They were quick at a couple of touchdown runs for South Carolina State, and the final numbers which for NC Central entering the fourth quarter, they were at 40 total yards. They end up with 105, but you know, not far from 500 yards of total offense tonight for the Bulldogs. Yeah, and take away the long 40-yard pass completion they had in the second half, and they completely got dominated, and they weren't even able to score a touchdown on that type of drive they had. Tough day at the office for the Eagles. Once again, the final four. Final score, South Carolina State 44 and NC Central 3. And coming up next, college football weekend kickoff for Jay Walker and our entire crew. I'm Mark Neely. Thanks so much for sharing this one with us from Durham. The Bulldogs, a big winner. And now let's send it to the studio. Here's Matt Schick. Eighth in the AP poll, of course, we're still roughly 10 days or so away from the first BCS standing.